Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Welcome to the IPA Champions Cup, live on Sporty Stuff TV. Good evening, Happy New Year to you, and welcome to the 2022 Sporty Stuff TV Champions Cup. We're here in Church Fenton, uh, just 10 miles on the outside of Leeds, for day one of one of the most prestigious events on the pool calendar. We're going to be seeing over the coming days and weeks some of the best players in the world competing for this title of the Champions Cup winner, £10,000 and this fabulous glass trophy. Uh, all the best players will be here. We've got the likes of Mark Farnsworth, uh, one of the best players from last year, 2021, current world champion John McAllister, a plethora of ex-world champions and, of course, our current title holder, Gareth Hibbert. Um, it promises to be a fantastic event and uh, I'm delighted to be joined by one of the most famous names from the betting industry, the belly from the telly himself, Gary Wiltshire. Gary, great to have you here. Yeah, thanks, Kev. Thanks for the invite. And uh, it's like a mini Ali Pally, isn't it? I think I'm at the Master Snooker. It's fantastic, isn't it? Great atmosphere as well. Uh, and just tell the viewers, particularly the, the pool viewers who are maybe not familiar, just a little bit about yourself. Well, I've got a nickname called the Belly from the Telly. I don't know why, like, looking at me. I don't know why they got that <laughs> nickname. But uh, now I've been at the, at the game. Sport of Kings, we call it. Graham Racing, horse racing for over 30 years, 40 years as a bookie on the track. And uh, and now I'm not in the uh, Sport of Kings. I'm in the Sport of Paul. And, you know, after the, what I've just seen now in the first match this evening, oh, it's a joy to be here. But, uh, yeah, it's a lovely bit of fun. And... Uh, and I've got the best judge, they say, the best judge in the country, the best ex betting ex uh, expert on pool with me as well. So little and large has been revisited this evening. Sorry, Mark, but revisited <laughs> this evening. Leave little and large. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that to the viewers. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Delighted to introduce our, our very own tiny assassin, the star of Pickers Picks, uh, Mark Pickworth. Mark, you know, we were here back in uh, last year where we saw one of the most uh, fantastic finals between Gareth Hibbert and Mark Boyle uh, in, in an event that literally had everything in it from day one. Um, are we going to expect the same this year? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've got a very different format here. It's going to be a race to fall. There's even chance of draws. It's a round-robin sort of format. It's going to be tremendous. There's going to be lots more upsets, I think, this time. We're going to have loads more last-frame last deciders. There's going to be a lot of tension, a lot of nerves out there. But the way that we're just seeing Liam Dunstan play, is there any nerves out there? I'm not so sure. I've got a feel for Matt Steeple there on the first match. Yeah, so if you joined us earlier, um, we saw Liam Dunster, the pro number one, put on an absolute clinic there, Gary. What did you? Uh, what were your thoughts well, on as, that Well, as a novice to Paul, that was absolutely out of this world, you know. You've got to feel sorry for, uh, for the butcher and the pigeon coming up next, haven't you? <laughs> After witnessing that, you know, all the pressures on the, our next match, our next live match here, match number two, isn't it, this evening? But... That was just fantastic. The Kingdom of Fife. I wonder why they say he's only even money to be Prime Minister of Scotland. Now he won that match, Liam. <laughs> so, uh, so you two guys are going to be uh, informing um, our audience throughout the tournament. Um, you've got your very own betting office here. Uh, I've heard. Yeah. What do you think about that, Gary? After half past nine? It's been my dream to have a betting shop where I can have a bet after midnight. And tonight, well, we're opening the doors at ten o'clock. Only between ourselves, me and Mark, we're having a little bit of fun in there, and uh, to the early hours of the morning, eh? So. It's like being in Vegas, isn't it? You know, Vegas 24-7, isn't it? So we're bringing Vegas here to, to near Leeds, haven't we? But we're going to have a bit of fun, Kev. That's what the game's all about, isn't it? And don't forget that 10 grand for the winner. Big, big bangers and mash, isn't it? Yeah, well, we look forward to hearing from you both throughout the tournament. And, uh, and talking of the, uh, the final that Gareth Hibbert uh, came through against Mark Boyle in what was a titanic uh, tussle, uh, let's just watch the closing highlights from that final in what was an epic encounter.
Yes, well, a very, very good evening. You just see us on the uh, on the table there. We're now in our little betting office, me and Mark, and uh, all I can say is a, a warm welcome to the Sporty Stuff Champions Cup again, 22. People that know me already, you know who I am, Gary Wilkshire, the belly from the telly, and uh, I'm going to introduce you now to my pool expert for the night, Mr Mark Pickworth, all the way from Vegas, they tell me, Mark. Yeah, I am, yeah. It's not took me that long, though. It's not the Vegas that everyone wants to be from. It's uh, Skeggy Vegas. Oh, not so. Las Vegas? No, no. Look Did you want me you. to? Look at, look at you. You know, I thought you was a Las Vegas man. I thought you'd have bought me one of these shirts back. Well, if we get some Vegas. of our bets right, then maybe we will be going to Vegas. Yeah, we think we've been good. But that first match was absolutely... I know the viewers on Sporty Stuff TV, I know they've been watching Graham Racing all night, but that was unbelievable, Liam Dunster, wasn't it? He was only four to five to win that match. He's won 4-0, he's the world's number one, and he's up against three amateurs this evening. Now, if that was an horse race, what we said before online at nine o'clock, that really and truthfully, that four to five looks tremendous value. But you think, Mark, with there only being six frames, you think a tie, three, three, is a big, big runner this evening, don't you, in, so, in the remaining five matches we've got? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this next sort of match that's coming up, which we'll talk about very soon, you know, a 5-2 to two for a draw, I think it's going to be tremendous value. And uh, I think if anybody's got any spare spare sort of quids or whatever it is, I'd get the money on the draw because there's going to be a couple here tonight. Well, just, just reminding the viewers back home when you say a draw, six frames, so 3-3, three, three, they draw the money, 5-2. to two. So there's not a lot between them in the betting as well, is there, really, you know, so... Really and truthfully, I can see where you're coming from. That The first match we see tonight, it was the world's number one, wasn't it? And he proved he was world's number one, winning 4-0. But in your eyes here, you don't think any of these two boys who's playing here. We've got the Pigeon versus the boy from Leicester, the Butcher. And uh, I've, I like a few Butchers in my time. I bought a few T-bone steaks here <laughs> a few as well, but... It's going to be close, isn't it? Well, it is going to be close. I mean, if you just look at some of the odds there, I mean, Jake, Jake didn't know, love. He, he is sort of, in my eyes, he's an edging favourite, but in the bookies' eyes, it's, it's completely even. They can't split them, Mark. 11 to 8. 11 to 8. And that's why I've gone for the draw. 11 to 2 and 5 to 2 to draw. That's why you're, you're going practically where the odds compilers with our betting partners this evening, who's priced up all these matches here tonight, and they can't find a favourite, can they? 11 to 8 each to 2 and 5 to 2. You think the value is five to two to draw? I'm going to go with you here, five to two. Oh, I went with the first favourite, and I thought he was a good thing. Yeah. But in this one here, the people I asked as well, with Paul, the, the people who are here this evening, you know, who you talk to, and no one knows who's going to win this match. So, you know, it's going to be really, really close. You know, and look at look at Jake as well. I think he's lost. Has he lost two or three out of his last ten? Well, he's only lost two matches in his two. last ten. Yeah, he's got a phenomenal record. Um, and he has won. He has got an amateur. He has got an amateur IPA title under his belt already. So he, he he's a good performer. He's he's been an ex ex professional player as well, and no doubt he's going to be a professional player. Have these two this players ever year. met before? What's the head to edge on them? Like? This, this, do you know what? Believe it or not, because Jake Jake Newlove has played five years now. But like Scott Pigeon, this is his first year. But they haven't played each other yet. Uh, this is going to be the first time that they're playing each other. And I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to this one. I, I can't edge it. I don't know which one's which. I don't know which. Well, I do know which one's which. But I don't know which one's going to win. You made me laugh there. You said Scott Pigeon. But that ain't his real name, <laughs> is it, Scott Pigeon? That's your <laughs> nickname, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. The Pigeon. The Pigeon. He's, he's always been known for the Pigeon. Unbelievable, you know, Scotty Anderson, that's what, and he's got the Leicester blue, he's from Leicester. Yeah. Leicester, I'll never forget when they won the football, Leicester, oh, that was a year I want to forget, honestly, I thought they couldn't win, but I'm talking through my pocket sure, again. Yeah, but Scotty Anderson there, the pigeon, how many matches he lost? One, two, three matches out of ten. There's nothing between these two, is there? Yeah. It's like your wallet, Mark, nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott's had a great start to his IPA career, and uh, he, I mean he's he's got a win ratio of sixty eight percent already. Ooh, you know, big. and it's really good, and especially in the standard these days. We're, we're talking about the world's best players, and uh, he's going to be on the professional ranks this coming year. That's a fact. Well, this sporty stuff, Champions Cup this year. When I say the for Paul, all the cream and the cream and the crops in it, isn't it? You know, anyone can win it, can't they? We I know we've just seen Liam win, but. Anybody can win this. Anyone can win the cup and walk away with ten grand and that lovely trophy, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, short races, race to four. These players aren't used to playing race to fours, especially in a huge tournament. Especially when there's ten thousand pounds at stake and that beautiful glass trophy that you've seen. It's tremendous, isn't plenty it? Plenty of pressure. Yeah, definitely. It really. Plenty, is. plenty of pressure. Well, we've got the four players who's in it this evening. 
And uh, with Matt Steeper, the sexy one, Liam Duster. Oh, here we go again. Matt Steeper, the sexy one. We've got Liam Duster. We've just seen that match, haven't we? And we know the score, 4-0 to Liam. Matt, a little bit unlucky in the first match, wasn't he? He was in on the balls, wasn't he? And he could have won that. But he's got used to the table now. Now, I think that's going to be a big help for Matt when he plays in matches two and three. His second and third matches this evening because he knows how the table's playing. Mark, Mark you're a professional pool player you know yourself it must be a, an help for you when you've had a little go on that table first and then when you're up against you think oh I know what I know what it's all about now yeah absolutely and he's got his toughest match out of the way on pen and paper the toughest match is out of the way he can relax now not relax too much because he, he needs to like take it a little bit serious he needs to try and get back into this this is a round robin format he's still not out of this yet and if he wins his next two matches he could go through yeah yeah I mean, Liam Dunster, you know, like he has, he's already won. I mean, he's won, like, I mean, look at that record. He's only lost twice in the last 10 matches and he won eight matches on the bounce yeah. and, that, and he picked up a title. And what, that's one of the nine titles he's won already in his IPA career. He's been playing five years on the IPA tour yeah. and he's got a 72% win record. Yeah. That is phenomenal. I think there's a bit of value still when the match is left. I'm just going to show the viewers that I've, you've missed this, unfortunately. But this was the, with our betting partners today. They went four to five, Liam, to beat, you know, to beat Steve. But four nil. I know it's after time, betting after time. We don't want to know that now. So we're going to tear that up. We're going to, and on match two, you really fancy. You've got your, hey, oh, it's your bet there, what you put up. New yep. Love the Anderson. Show the viewers at home what you think. So New Love the Anderson. I think this is a definite going to be a draw. Five to two. I think it's it's odds on. Absolutely odds on. Odds on? Odds on, definitely. Odds on. It's great odds. odds. Can an odd, a five to two, Charlie. The odds on in my eyes. Well, what more can we say? We're playing at home. If you want, you've got a few minutes before the next match, haven't they, to come? Yeah. But honestly, if you want to go with Mark here, Mark Pickworth, don't forget, he is an expert at Paul. He thinks this 5-2 to two this next match should be odds on. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have a short break. So if you fancy going with Mark at 5-2, to two, pick was picks. Get on now, boys and girls. Ready? Please lag for break. Welcome back to the IPA Sporty Stuff TV Champions Cup for our second match. This one between Jake Dylan Newlove and Jake Scott Newlove Anderson. And I am delighted to be joined in the commentary box once again by our very own Pickers Picks, Mark Pickworth. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Dan. And uh, wow, what a first match that was. That was awesome. And uh, I'm, it's going to be pretty much the same here. Both of these players are very established. Both amateur players, but there's no doubt they're going to be professional players this coming season. Yeah, I think I would make the... I, I know you've backed the draw here, as we, we all saw before the break. I think I would make Jake just a slight favourite. I think he's got a bit more experience at this level, playing in the last... Sporty Stuff TV tournament, of course, the, the 2021 Champions Cup. And I think this is a bit of a new experience for Scott, and he's going to have to overcome those nerves pretty quickly if he's going to get a result here. Yeah, you're probably right. But uh, I can't wait for this match to get underway, and uh, I'm pretty sure Ben's going to be doing that in a minute. So uh, we'll come Champions back to Cup you. Champions Cup Group A, match two, best of six frames. First frame, Jake Dillon, you left to break. Time running. There we go, we are underway and Jake Dylan Newlove has crashed into the pack and he's made a ball. It looked like a dry break at first, Mark, but uh, that red just ran into the yellow and knocked it into that top right pocket. And this is actually a wonderful looking opportunity first up. Yeah, this is the opportunity you want straight away. When you start in a match, these are the balls that you want. And uh, he's got a little bit of uh, work to do. I mean, Ten that seconds. little sort of cluster of three reds down, they're going to need... A little bit of good positioning, and uh, it all depends on how he sees them. But he's uh, he's going out for these. Felt like he was forced into reds by the red that landed over that top right corner. If he'd gone yellows, he'd have had the problem of the the yellow in bulk. But I think being forced into reds has potentially brought in another problem, and that's the black. I, 
That's a sort of awkward ball to get onto, isn't it? It would probably centre. go into the left centre. But um, you've got to be very precise with your position if you're going to get on that. Yeah, he certainly is. And uh, looking at that, he's run out of position already. I mean, is there a three-ball plant on? He, he can't take, take it on in this early start of the match, match can he? Surely not. I mean, oh, he's no. got to be playing safe, hasn't he? I mean, he's got quite a big target to get into, hasn't he, with those three reds there. He could skim off this and, and try and get into those. Oh, well, it, does it go? Well, it may have done, but it didn't. So Scott Anderson gets his chance at the table in the first frame. And he'll be delighted to come to the table. Because that looked like a much better chance for Jake than uh, than he made it look. Yeah, and let's not forget about Scott Anderson. He got to the uh, the last amateur final in the Isle of Man, where he played Michael Tomlinson. And that, what a great final that was. And uh, he's he's not going to be an easy pushover here for Jake. Even though, you know, you make him a little bit of a... A little bit of a favourite, and uh, to be honest with you, I, I sort of agree with you there a little bit, but, you know, it's a draw for me. Well, Scott's not made the most of that early opportunity. Brings Jake back to the table. But he has still got to find a way of of getting nicely on that black, and it's not easy from here. Would you be looking at moving that, at maybe getting into it in a couple of shots time, and just trying to develop. When you say a couple of shots time, he might be forced into just coming into this yellow now. And he'll just push it past. But he's not, he hasn't. And he's opened it up nicely. But that black, he has opened it up. Yeah, that black does go into the left centre. So there is a possibility of getting on it. Yeah, it's not a, not a huge window to get the cue ball into though, is it? It'll depend which, which one of these reds is his last ball. It looks like it's going to have to be the one closest to the bottom left. That is not going to be an easy positional shot, whichever way you swing it. No, I don't think that's gone to plan. I think he wanted to leave that red over the pocket. So he is sort of rerouting now. Extension called. If he just drops this into the left centre mark, is there a, a possibility that if he doesn't get quite the position he wanted on the black, does that yellow near the right centre make that a big pocket for a double potentially? Well, I mean, I think he'll he'll like to get it on in the open pocket. So, I mean, it's all on this shiny now. What's he going to do? He's just going to oh, he's played this well, has he? It's all on the pace. He's short of it. Has he got a double? Has he got? Has he got a double? Has he got a treble? If he can see a bit of it, then there's a chance. But my word, this is a tough shot. I don't think he's got the potting angle, Mark. I think he's going to have a shot at a double here, though. I think you can see enough of this black. Ten seconds. It's a big pocket on the right as well. Oh, that slid. That has slid off shot. that side cushion. It? It's Time widened in. the angle. And it's widened the chance of Scott Anderson taking the lead considerably. What a great opportunity he's got after that mistake from Jake. Yeah, we sort of uh, didn't really predict the sort of new cloth that we've got on here for this tournament. And when they do get new cloths and new cushions, they uh, they do slide. This is our sort of first glimpse here of Scott. And this is a chance that we really expect him to take out. I think you can visibly see that there's there's some nerves there from Scott. This will be his first time on TV. And I guess in this sort of spectacular new arena and the, the environment that he finds himself in, that becomes all the more clear every time you walk around the table, doesn't it, Mark? That kind of, that feeling that this is bigger than anything you've done before, really. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, this will be pretty much his biggest sort Total of tournament snooker. today, playing in this arena, in the studio setting. There'll be a lot of nerves jangling. If he, if he says not, he's lying. Scott, he couldn't quite control the cue ball in that visit. 
but he has come up with a pretty telling safety. What can Jake do from here? Oh, well, it's a hit. <laughs> uh, to be honest, he'll take that because there was more than a hint of fortune involved. Yeah, well, it was a good snooker there from Scott. He was very tough to hit. In the, uh, Jake Dillon knew, love. He's had a slice of luck there, just coming off that jaw to hit that black. How much is that going to prove in this match? He shouldn't really. Well, I am surprised Scott's going this way about it. Um, he's not guaranteed himself position here, and he's only just, just come far enough. He's that cue ball to stay out of the centre, which it, again, just about does. This is going to be a big settler for Scott Anderson. Yeah, it is, but the way that is, is, I mean, he played that with side off that cushion. You just saw it just slid and he didn't get the reaction he normally does. But what has he done with that black? Oh, my word. Well, we've, we've talked about the nerves and that is the only explanation for that shot. Scott Anderson leaves the black hanging over the right centre pocket and Jake Newlove takes, you have to say, a surprise lead given the... The opportunities that Scott had in that first frame, how painful is that going to be for Scott Anderson, Mark? Yeah, that's going to be a hard one to take. I mean, how will he come back from that? He's, he's just got to give his head a wobble here because this is a short race. You, you can't let things affect you quite you know, as easy. It's very hard to say, you know, it's easy to say that sat here watching him. And it's just about how now he's going to react to that. He's got to get that out of his mind now. Well, he will have an opportunity to do exactly that straight away. He is breaking in the second frame. Frame two. Scott Anderson to break. Training one frame to nil. Time running. He just about kept the cue ball on the table. It slammed into that far jaw. In that right centre pocket. And actually, what a split this is. Perhaps the pool gods are smiling on him, Mark, because after that miss in the previous frame, this is the sort of table you want to come to. Yeah, it is. But is he going to take this tougher pot for his opening ball on these yellows? Ten seconds. I mean, he's, he's, going to, cool. he's took his extension, so that's a good sign. He's still thinking correctly. Yeah, he doesn't need to take that yellow one. There's some... Um, I mean, there's opportunities on reds, but even so, the opportunity on yellows, he definitely didn't need to take that shot on. And as you say, good use of the shot clock, good use of his extension. And now he can get into his work. Yeah, and these are the shots he needs to get right. So this, this sort of on the cushion with side, he's not judged this right again. No, he's definitely overdone the side there. I don't think that's necessarily a massive problem. Okay, his next shot's tough, whatever he takes on, but that yellow that he's left there is in a really nice position for your last ball to the black. But you've got to get there first, and Scott Anderson hasn't. Bit of second prize by covering the pocket. Yeah, it has, but is he going to go all out for this now? He's going to cut that red back and clear the uh, yellow over the pocket. Yeah, for viewers new to black ball rules, Jake is attempting what we call a skill shot or a combination shot. Well, if you hit your ball first and one pot it, you can pot your opponent's in. ball in the same shot. But Jake has only done one of those things and he hasn't made the pot time on in. his own ball. So he turns the table over once again in this match to Scott Anderson. I mean, I was going to say this is probably Scott's best chance, but I would argue that was in the previous frame, Mark. Yeah, and there's been a lot of chances here already uh, that we've seen. More chances we've seen in this first two frames of this than we did in the last match. So, but this is one he's got to take. Slightly tricky positional shot here. Wants to finish straight on this yellow down the left-hand side. This is missable. He's not wasting any time though, is he? He's just getting down to it and that is just pure, pure nerves. 
Well, how lucky has he got here? I mean, Jake's got a safety option. He can play the, the red off the cushion into the yellow, bat the yellow down the table and uh, and hide behind the black maybe, but <laughs> it's incredibly lucky by Scott Anderson that he hasn't left Jake anything nicer. Can he come cushion first and pop this red mark? I'm seconds. not sure that's on. Extension looks cool. Pretty tight, um, but what he's, he needs to do is move this yellow away from this corner bag. So... He'll be playing it's like a bit of a, a safety shot as well. Is he playing it with pace? He is. He's played that terrifically. That is a beautiful shot from Jake Dylan Newlove. And it gives him the opportunity to steal another frame. I say steal, Mark, because Scott in his wildest dreams wouldn't have had chances that easy in the first two frames of this tournament. No, absolutely not. And, uh, God, this could have been 2-0 either way, especially if Jake takes these out and takes a 2-0 lead. That is a very confident positional shot by Jake Newlove. That is an equally confident black ball. He Great. leads by two frames to nil. Scott Anderson, well, he said it in the previous frame, Mark needs to give his head a wobble. That is definitely the case here. Yeah, that's two huge errors here. Scott Anderson, and uh, he's been punished. Jay Dillon, new love. He could quite easily be two nil ahead now. That is a fact. We have plenty more action for you to come this evening on Sporty Stuff TV. Can you tell us a little bit more about the format of this tournament, Mark, and how many matches we've got to come, etc.? Wow, you're putting me on the spot here, are we? So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll let, uh, we'll let uh, Jake break off here. We'll have a look, see how these go. Frame three. And then uh, Jake we'll try left and break. see how the uh, land and then we'll go nil. from there. Time running. Not a bad break at all. I'll try and get some of the uh, the way that this event is working. Uh, so there's going to be 24 players in event one. So this will be completed within nine days. Uh, the winner of event one, which has to go through three stages. So the first stage is six groups of four players where they'll play off to Ten be. Seconds. And the one winner of each of the groups will go through to the next stage, along with the two best runners up of the six groups. That will then make two more groups of four with eight players, which will be the stage two. And then the top two of that will then go to, through to stage three, where there'll be four players left. And then the winner of that will then get through to the grand final on the 20th of March. And then we'll repeat that process uh, for events two and three, uh, which you'll see. So basically we've put the odd ranked professionals in event one and the even ranked professionals in event two. So we're not going to see your favourite sort of players in event one. They will be in event two. That's pretty much the uh, best way of explaining it. So essentially with the format, every frame is important because even if you don't win your group, still the chance to go through in as a best place, second place. So we are in the very first group stage and we have six matches a night. This is the second of tonight's six. So still four more matches for you to enjoy here on Sporty Stuff. Yeah, and these first two weeks are on three nights a week. And then we'll go to four nights a week for the, the final two weeks of the first event. So definitely plenty of action coming up. And while we've been wittering on amongst ourselves about the format, Mark, Jake Dylan Newlove has made very short work of this frame. He now frame. leads by three frames to nil, a break dish. And Scott Anderson, looking a little bit defeated, already sat in that chair. 
Yeah, he certainly is. And you can just see now Jake Dillon Noodle who's settled really well. And, uh, I suppose when you get these chances back, and it's going to be hard now for Scott to get back into this. And my three all draw that I predicted isn't looking too good. Or are we going to see a comeback? We saw lots of comebacks last year, the 2021 Champions Cup. Surely we're going to see lots more. Surely we are. Is it going to start tonight? Sure it can. I have to say, I think it's long odds at the moment with what we've seen from Scott so far, but it's amazing how much momentum there is in this sport. Three, four. Scott Anderson One to more break. good opportunity for Scott. Three frames to nil. You Time just running. never quite know. What can he do from this break? He's got such a huge break. How many balls has he potted there? Two yellows, three reds. That is phenomenal. That is monstrous. And just look at those reds. Well, we said, is he going to get another chance in this oh. match? He's got another chance. And already, it's not gone right. That is a very loose positional shot. Can he see enough of that red to pot it? I'm not convinced from this angle. Uh, side seconds. cushion. Well, he's made contact with the cushion, so it's not a foul. But it is another opportunity that's escaped Scott Anderson. And Jake Newlove now comes to the table with the first chance to put this match to bed. Yeah, he certainly has, and the, the only thing that Scott can just rely on is that yellow on that cushion. But after he's took this into the left centre, he's going to be taking that ball next. So if he gets on this yellow on that far cushion, this game is all over. How much confidence is Jake going to be able to take from this, Mark? You know, I'm sort of talking as if he's already finished this match, but Jake's got to take on the world number one later on, Liam Dunster. And it's a bit of a must win for everyone else in this group against Liam. Yeah, certainly is. But we're going to see the butcher against the duster very soon. So, but yeah, this is now looking like a formality. Well, two matches in. Looks like it's going to be two 4 0 victories. Jake didn't start this match all that well. But you have to say, the last couple of opportunities he's had, he's taken superbly. And here's another one. Jake Newlove completes the victory. He beats Scott Anderson. It's a whitewash. Another whitewash in this first match and first top group of the 2022 Champions Cup. 4-0 to Jake. Scott Anderson will sit in his seat. He will be very disappointed with his performance there. Oh, well, what was all that about? 4-0, the, the butcher. I know, and he has just butchered somebody in there. That is a Unbelievable, fact. Unbelievable, wasn't it? It really that is. Was absolutely fantastic, wasn't it? You know, again. We thought it'd be, but not being funny, the other boy from Leicester, he had every chance of winning, didn't he? You know, it was really, really lucky. You know, it was so unlucky, wasn't he? Could have easily been two, two early. And then all of a sudden, two down, three down, four down, all over. So, but they've both got two more matches to play, haven't they, Mark? Yeah, they're not out of it yet, definitely not. But Scott will be a little bit disappointed there because he could have easily have took both of them first frames there. And, uh, and they're good chances, and uh, I think just the nerves just got the better of him. And uh, well, we're going to have to see how he's going to sort of recover from that. You know what I'm looking forward for? Because later on, you got Dunster, Dunster versus the Butcher there, haven't we? What a match that would be! That would be very, very, very close. But we've got another match to come up now. Would you make of this one match three? Well, match three, I mean, Scott Anderson, you know, this is where he's got to try and recover. And we've got both of the players that have been beaten 4-0. They're coming up against each other. So, I mean, whoever loses this, they're pretty much out of this, uh, this group now. Well, they've got the betting on here now. 11 of 10, Scott Anderson. Seven of all, Matt Steeper. 
and nine of all the draw. Really, that's seven of all Matt Steeper. I know he got beat 4-0. Scotty Anderson's got beat 4-0. And he's still 11 of 10 chance. Do you think Scotty will come back here? Well, he needs to. He needs to get back in here very soon. Cause if, he needs if, to win the first frame, doesn't he? If yeah, he, he wins does. the first one... He needs one, to settle down. Settle he needs down. To relax. It's all he about needs to settling down. I, think, yeah. I feel that he's, he was sort of rushing in that last match. You know, we weren't really thinking about his shots. You know, he's got 30 seconds a shot. That is a long time to play one shot. And, he, you know, he's playing a shot after like five seconds. And he's got to cut that out straight away. You know what they call the Foxes in football, Leicester City? The comeback kings. Can we see another comeback here? Well, he needs to. He definitely does. But I wouldn't write Max Steeper off. I'd, well, I think, I, I think this one, draw this could this be a draw here, couldn't yeah. it? 11 of 10, 7 of all, 9 of all the draw. You're going to go for the draw again. I'll tell you what, where is your slip here, what you had for this one? For where did you have? You had match 2 and 3, yeah. both draws 10 to both 1. Both draws, yeah. How about this one? Anderson to beat Steeper at 6 to 5. Now, that 6 to 5 disappeared. That's now an 11 of 10 chance, Anderson. So... The public at home who's playing with our betting partners on Sporty Stuff TV, they've took the 6-5 to five and he's now 11-10. So that's where the money's going. They think Scotty's going to come back. The Foxes, they never let us down, do they, Mark? <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> well, yeah, I think what we can do, I can rip my, my best You can up, rip your one up, that 2-3, two, two, yeah. You can rip the draw up there, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, I'll just, I, I, I think there's nothing in this, honestly. 11 of 10, Scotty Anderson. I know we has got beat 4-0 there, but I thought Matt Steeper, you know, in the first match, don't forget Matt was up against the world's number one. He got beat 4-0, but I think Matt could come back here. I think that you went for a draw the last time. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Odds are even, I'm going to go for the draw this time. Yeah. I'm going to take the 9-4, yeah. OK, then. Then bookie boys don't get it wrong. Five to two it was this morning, nine of all, 11 of 10. The one who's drifted in the betting is Matt, isn't he? Matt Steeple, he's gone out because after that first match when he's got beat, he's gone out to seven to four. But where's the value there? You fancy Anderson, I know you do. You've got that little smile about your <laughs> face, Marky boy. I'm going to go for the outsider, go and I'm going to go for Steeple at seven to four. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to go for a break. So if you want to play, you'll have about three minutes before the next match starts. So uh, I'm going for the outsider. Matt is going for the, uh, the favourite. So I'll leave it to you. Let's go for a break. Thank you, gents. When you're ready, please lag for break. Welcome back to the Sporty Stuff TV Champions Cup for our third match of the evening. It's Matt Steeper against Scott Anderson. Scott Anderson wins the it's essentially the battle of the whitewashed. <laughs> Matt Steeper lost his first match 4-0 against Liam Dunster. Scott Anderson lost 4-0 to Jake Newlove. Mark Pickworth joins me in the commentary box. You've uh, had a bit of a chat with our betting expert, Gary Wiltshire, Mark. But how do you see this one going? Well, I mean, I've had it down as a draw right from the very start. Um, but the way that these both these players have played their first matches, they're both very edgy. So our nerves going to play a part. I'm sure they will. I'm sure we're still going to see quite a few misses. But whoever settles down first, he's got more of a chance of winning and trying to keep in this Champions Cup. Champions Cup Group A, match three, best of six frames. First frame, Scott Anderson to break. Time running. Well, as you say, Mark, both of these players not off to the best of starts. But you have to feel that it's Scott Anderson who had the better chances. Matt Steeper, of course, was up against the world number one in Liam Dunster. And although he had a, a couple of tricky chances, they were tough. Whereas Scott had some pretty routine ones that he put down against Jake Newlove. Yeah, he did, and uh, he looks like he's got a pretty seconds. simple one here again. Extension but cool. after the balls we've seen him miss, can he take these out? Yeah, he's, he's walking around the table, sort of shaking his head at everything, but uh, I'm with you. It, it's not a simple chance. They're not absolutely clear there. If I'm honest, I'm a little surprised he's gone yellows, because I was fully expecting him to have a go at the reds. 
Yeah, it's a, a strange one, but with um, the balls that are up there, there's going to be they're going to leave them balls to the end anyway, aren't they? To get on the black. So, but you know, I said I said just sort of in my little little preview there of this match, I think he's sort of rushing around the table. I need to see him just slow down a bit, relax. And he's doing doing a little bit more relaxing now. But I mean, the last that last match there, he was taking a shot after five seconds. He was just rushing around. Well, for me, the big shot in the frame coming up after this one. He can drop this one in down the rail. But this, after this, is going to be a very big positional shot. That yellow on the right-hand side, that is very tough to get onto. And he's not, you've got to say, he's not in position yet. I sort of thought that he might have taken yellows because he feels that the black has a big pocket up to the top left um, along the rail and sort of in off the red but I don't think that's going to help him now I don't think this is his preferred route at all he's actually having a good look at a double here as well 10 seconds And that is a bit too straight. And it brings Matt Steeper to the table for his first chance in this match. Both these players yet to get off the mark in this tournament. Both one match in. Well, the, the, the tension out there for these two must be excruciating, Mark. Extension call. Cool. Yeah, it certainly is. But I do think we're going to see quite a few chances per frame because neither of them have, have really sort of settled in. But this is a chance here for Matt to settle in. But where's that white going to rest? Has he come out OK? Not too bad. There was a little hand of apology there. I think Matt's just about moved that red far enough that he can pot it without having to worry about a double kiss or a push shot. In it goes. So it's important he gets on what will be his final red nicely, isn't it, Mark? The, the one in the bulk area. He wants to finish fairly straight on that to the top left so that he can just drop it in and run through for the black. Yeah, but he's got to be careful here because if he sort of stuns this too much and he hits the jaw or anything like that, he, this is a shot that he needs to get right. There's plenty of room for error. So we should, we should see him just turn this frame in. I tell you what, he was close to that jaw, but he's the wrong side of this red, is he? Oh, he's come well, probably a good three, four inches too far. He can drop this in and have a shot at the black, but it's not going to be as easy as he would have wanted. No, definitely not. And uh, you know, I've said it from the start, there is nerves out there. As you say, though, he had a big margin of error for that shot. He, he could under-hit it a lot more than he could over-hit it. He's chosen to go round the table with the cue ball. He's come back off the jaw. Oh, I would argue that's a bit of fortune, to be honest. I don't think he was going to be anywhere near on it had that jaw not intervened, Mark. Absolutely. If he'd have missed that jaw, he'd have probably been snookered behind that yellow. But he's going to have a shot at this and a shot to take this first frame. And it has Frame. just about dropped. I don't think that was in the in the centre of the pocket at all. But Matt Steeper can breathe a sigh of relief. He is off the mark. Scott Anderson yet to get up and running in this tournament. Well, it's another chance missed, you have to say, Mark. Yeah, from Scott Anderson. I mean, the way that he breaks the balls, they're all coming out lovely. He just can't take them. It's just error after error. And uh, I'm not sure he's going to win a frame tonight if he continues with this form. No, I have to say, I think his head's a bit fried because, honestly, I still can't quite understand why he chose to go for yellows in that frame when the reds looked a much, much simpler pattern to go for. Frame two. Matt Steeper to break. Beating one frame to nil. Time running. Yeah, we also know how cruel this game can be when things start going wrong for you. They just continue and continue. And things just get harder. Pockets get smaller. Balls get bigger. It's, it's just them things that go wrong. Oh, 
I was going to say that I feel like the one advantage that we've seen so far that Scott might have over Matt is his break. Although Scott's not taking those chances, he's getting those chances because his break has actually been phenomenal. And that's why it's even more of a surprise that he hasn't got off the mark yet. Um, that's a lovely opening shot from Matt, though, using the black ball rules and his knowledge of them very, very tidily there. Plays the plant first off, red onto yellow, and that means he is yellows. And these, all of a sudden, look great, don't they, Mark? Yeah, they do. Okay, does he just overrun this a bit? It should be okay. He's going to have options here. But there's a, there's a little bit of traffic in the way with the reds. So he does need to get the right angle on his final yellow to come back down for the black. But I can't see a problem here for him, can you? No, I have to say I'm with you. I can't. I don't know if the black will go to the bottom left, and that means that he really wants to finish on this yellow in a way that he can screw back off it. What has he done there? Is he on that yellow? Wow. We are seeing it all here tonight. Oh, that, that overhead, I think he's just about okay here. You think? Oh, it's wow. very tight, isn't it? He's got very, very, very tight. Ten seconds. Extension called. Start the shot clock, please. Well, he's used the extension. Taking all the time he can over this shot. It is a little bit of a swerve, so he can't see the natural angle. And he hasn't got it right. Yeah. Now then, Scott Anderson, here is your chance. It's not an easy chance by any stretch. And I think if he's thinking clearly, Mark, he'll probably play a safety here. Yeah, it might not be the first shots as a safety. He might just pop this in the, in the right centre and then just get a snooker down at the bottom. Oh, he's, I think he, that's what he tried. You know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that red actually went. It, it looked a bit close. <laughs> snooker. Um, but he's played it in, I think we'll give him credit for that. I think he's played it in such a way that he wasn't going to leave Matt a shot. And now Matt, unless he can roll in behind this yellow, Matt's in serious trouble here. Ten seconds. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's got to find a gap, but that ain't even there. Unless he can just clip the right-hand side of this yellow. And that's just sprung wow. off the cushion there. One free shot, one visit. Really Time has. Out. Time out. Now, for me here, Mark, Scott has got to be positive. Time running. You know, there are some players in this situation who would put the, put the yellow safe or something like that. I, I'm not sure about this. I mean, it's worked out okay, and, and he should be fine. It's it's not a bad shot, but... Um... Yeah, and he just needs to keep a better composure here. And just he, he's just got to try and pretend he's at the practice arena. That's all he's got to do. We're at the local pub. Yeah. Okay, he's, 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 he's rushing around for me. That's when mistakes can happen. But this is how he plays. If that's how he feels the most comfortable. He's not hanging about. Has he, has he got a taxi ordered, has he? Or <laughs> he does know he's got another match as well, does he? You mentioned, Mark, that, of course, Scott made his first amateur final in our previous event in the Isle of Man. And... Um, I, I, I was commentating on that final, and I have to say, I didn't notice it as a particular feature of his play Frame. to play quite this quickly. Um, so I'm not, I'm not convinced, but I, I think he's just nerves, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's got his first frame on the board, so he'll feel a little bit better. But as he settled, with all these sort of misses still in his head, Let's hope that he does settle after that. It's the first time he's been able to make hay, if you like, of one of his opponent's mistakes. And there have been a few. Frame three. Scott Anderson to break. Scores are tied. One frame all. Time running. Out. 
Now, the first time that Scott Anderson's break has let him down, and it has let him down in the worst One way future. possible. One visit. That cue ball careering right, straight in off from the break. And look at the table he's left, Matt Mark. Unreal. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, he has got a huge break, hasn't he? Scotty boy. But he's got to keep the white on the table. It's the first time he's lost that. Certainly a good chance here on either colour. Um, and he does, of course, have a free Ten shot seconds. to open up Extension the visit as well. Just looking at the table, I sort of think the biggest problem is, is the yellow in amongst the reds. The, the one to the left of the black. Clearly so does Matt. But that is a poorly executed shot in trying to get it out of the way. Yeah, but he got a little kick there off that yellow. I mean, I'm not sure what he was playing. Was he trying to get the yellow around the back of the... Well, around the side of the red? I think he was. But he's made yeah, it I tricky for you, himself. If you got the yellow in a potable position there, um, then it really opened up the yellows. Everything all of a sudden fell into place. It was a nice, easy pattern for him to work his way round. Of course, we do have a, a couple more commentators on board as well, don't we, Mark? Seconds. We've got um, myself and yourself and, and Kev. But this time we've, we will have the returning Jim White and, of course, Dan Davey as well joining us at some stage. Yeah, we're very sport for choice here at the IPA. It's really good to have everybody on board. And uh, no doubt we'll be hearing from them very, very soon this week. Yeah, the, the voice of Paul, Jim White. I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed his commentary in the previous iteration of this tournament. And I'm looking forward to, to some of his gems this time as well. Yeah, he's off like a whippet and stuff like that. That's all going to be returning <laughs> here at Sporty Stuff. Uh, he's, uh, he's got all the sayings. He's, uh, could, uh, well, he could write a book on them, to be honest. Probably three or four books. Well, between him and Gary Wiltshire, they could definitely write one together. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> Ten seconds. Surrounded by legends, aren't we? We really are. We certainly are. But for Matt Steeper, that final yellow is surrounded by reds. And he's underdone that previous positional shot a little bit. This is so tough to get from one to the other, Mark. Yeah, he's even left himself a tough pot. Is he? He's not playing a double here, is he? He has. He's played he a is. double. And how well, well that has he is played glorious. That? Brilliant shot. That is an. If he's on that yellow, that's an early contender for shot of the championship. I'll tell you that now. That is a stunning shot. Yeah. The level of control involved there is astonishing. Yeah, and what we're saying, he's had about a four-inch area to, to get on that yellow. I mean, it'd be a travesty if he didn't pot this black now. It's unreal, but, oh, well, has he made this? <laughs> How hard has he made this black? It's, a, it's either a tough shot up to the top right or a very thin snick to the left centre. What would you prefer? Well, top right for me. Well, same for Matt. Oh, oh, it's so close, but it hasn't dropped. And Scott Anderson comes to the table with yet another chance. Although that is an awkward cue ball that he's been left by Matt. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's got to try and hide this cue ball somehow. He needs to hold himself together. Has he hit it hard enough? He hasn't, I don't think. Or has he? Tight. I, I'm not, I think Matt can see it. I'm not convinced he can see the potting angle, Mark. Wow. Well, I thought he'd under hit, hit that. I think, that. I think we might be seeing the steeper swerve again. Ten seconds. We've seen a failed one up to now. Can he get this one right? Not quite. For me, Mark, he didn't really give that cue ball a chance there. He's hit that a bit too hard for, for a swerve. Yeah, he did. Um, and uh, Scott was a little bit fortunate there because he definitely should have had a full ball snooker. 
Oh, he's really trying to put him in a lot more trouble. And this one's going to be well, not tricky, isn't it? Is it one cushion escape? Can you see enough for that? Time out. Right hand cushion. I mean, whichever way you swing it, this is going to be a hit and hope for Matt Steeper, isn't it? And in terms of the one cushion escape, that might help because he's going to have to hit that first cushion very hard and it might square it up a bit. Might give it a chance. Ten seconds. Oh, he swerved it off the cushion. That's a lovely shot. It is. But look where the black's gone. Yeah, it's given Scott a great chance, hasn't it? I think the way things have gone for Scott, Matt's going to find himself in another snooker here. But Scott does need to be careful. Everyone on this tour, you know, amateur or professional, is perfectly capable of coming off a cushion and potting a black like that. Yeah, I think if you, if you continue to give your, your opponent chances at shots like these, eventually one of them's going to take. Total snooker. Yeah, but, I mean, he's got to ch try and take the easy option here and just make sure he hits the black, because if he can rest on this black, Scott would be in a bit of trouble, especially if this black comes off the cushion. Very well called. Has left Scott a shot. The top of those reds will go to the right centre quite comfortably. Shot. We've added pressure now because that black is wide in the open. Good pot there from Scott. And good position as well. I feel he's got to take these out. Yeah, Scott can't really defend anymore, as you say, because Matt's brought his black out into the open. But that is a big, big misjudgment from Scott. He he didn't want the cue ball to hit that second red. He was trying to top it through into the one on the right-hand side. And it's uh, it's thrown a lot more than he expected. Yeah, this is horrible. It really is. I like the way he's played this. Good pace. Has he left a cutback? I don't think he has. I think he might have left an edge, but I don't think it's a potting Tired? angle. <laughs> You could argue Scott's been slightly unfortunate there. He's played a very good safety shot, actually. But the way the two reds have gone together on the left-hand side, it just gives him another problem when he comes back to the table. If he comes back to the table, I should say. Ten seconds. Well, he keeps getting out of these snookers. There's not going to be many more snookers he's going to be in. Scott's going to have to take these out. Got having a look at those two reds. Does the top of those go into the left centre mark? I think it probably does, but you've got to land nicely on it, and he hasn't left himself the right angle. No, it don't look like it. I mean, he can screw this back and come off the the short side of the uh, bottom right and cushion, yes. but God, it's a terrifically hard shot. What can he do here? Is he going to leave a plant? Ten seconds. Could he screw it back into the black and leave a double? You've called it, Dan. And even better, well, he can drop it I in. I say a double. I think, yeah, I'm with you. I think he's on this straight. That's a that's a, a very good shot from uh, some hard work that he made for himself. Yeah, it looked like he had a different angle to what he, he pinched from that bag. So credit to him there. Big credit to Scott Anderson. He looks like he had no confidence at all after that first frame, but he has clawed his way into the lead of this match. And now Matt Steeper has to respond. Scott Anderson leads by two frames to one. This is an intriguing clash, Mark. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, Matt Steeple did everything asked of him there. He got out of every snooker. Um, I suppose he'd be disappointed with his positional shot on the black, but 
it was one of them that could always go wrong and I think both of these players they're sort of coming to situations on the table where things are going wrong or they're just it's just not going right for them. Frame four. It's been so Max scrappy so broke. far. Trailing two frames to one. Time running. Matt Steeper's first break in this match went very well indeed and he missed the chance. Oh, they're both breaking well, but this looks very dry. In the context of this match, Mark, do you think that actually it might be better for Matt to have gone dry? I know that sounds silly, but the way that they've both been playing, sometimes it's better to have the second opportunity at the table. Yeah, that's if you get one. And, and then Scott, you know, after that last clearance, he'll feel a lot better about himself. And it's just whether he can sort of hold himself together and get these yellows out. I mean, I think that yellow passes into the top left-hand corner. And the one that sort of clustered just, you know, in front of this bolt line, I think it goes to the left centre quite easily. And he, look, he looks a different player now. Yeah, this has been pinpoint so far from Scott Anderson. Is he just going to nudge that yellow? No. Nope. Held it on the red. One more slightly tricky positional shot, and it's this one. Yeah, I think he was relying on a little bit of just canning in the red a, a touch. But it's not come off. I think he's got to go into to the top left here with this one. Well, he's gone into the centre and he hasn't got it. I'm with you, Mark. That was so, so tough. Yeah, I think I'd have been, steeper. Yeah, I think I'd have been taking out into the top left because even if you'd have missed it, if you covered the bag, you'd have got a little bit of insurance. But Matt Steeper can get back in this match now. Such a shame for Scott because, like you say, early in this clearance, you know, Matt's break didn't work and Scott looked a different player. He was strolling around the table with, visibly with confidence. He looked like he'd grown a foot. All of a sudden, just one loose shot. It, it, it feels like it's sort of back to square one. Your prediction on the draw is looking a lot more likely now, though, Mark. Yeah, it is, but, I mean, there's still a little bit to go. I mean, Matt, Matt looks so steady, definitely more steadier out of the, the two players. Where Scott, when he's fluent, and it, it looks good when he's on, it really does, but when he misses, it looks horrific. Um, I don't mean that in a really bad way. It, uh, it just makes some too many errors. As Matt made one here, where's this red going to go if he cannons into it? Can he miss it? He's played it well. Lovely controlled shot there from Matt Steeper. Yeah, that is superb. Had to play that at the perfect pace. As you say, he was nudging that red dangerously close to the left-hand side cushion. Brings the cue ball back in a... Oh, that was a bit of a dangerous shot, Mark. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, I don't think I'd have been letting the white ball travel that much. But it's made no difference to him. He's levelled this well, match up at two frames each. At this time, Matt Steeper with the counter clearance. He pulls us back to two apiece. There are just two frames remaining in this match. Whatever happens... If they both take one, it'll be our first draw. Either way, it's our first match that hasn't gone to a whitewash. Yeah, we're getting our money's worth now. <laughs> Without a shadow. No, it's just having a conversation between themselves. Probably talking about how difficult this is to mark. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And frame five. I think Scott, he just Scott needs Anderson to get the white ball on the table here. Scores are tied. Two frames all. Time yeah, running. has got a good break on him though, Scott. I do like the way he breaks these off. Well, is that 
or is that not the curse of the commentator? We, <laughs> we've both talked up Scott Anderson's break. But uh, so far in this match, one good, one dry, and one in off. This is a very messy table, though. Ten seconds. Yeah, it's one table that Matt Steve has been associated with quite a lot and on tonight's uh, matches. He's not had it easy today, that's a fact. No, I mean, obviously he feels that red's the colour and I can see that, but he definitely has got to do something about that black. He wouldn't have minded that slowing up six inches before it did either. That red just to the right of the cue ball there. Bit awkward to get on. He'd have liked to have taken it out next. What about those two reds in the centre, Mark? Do you think they plant? It looks a bit tight. Yeah, but he's not in prime position. He wanted to take the plant next. And now he's taken the ball away with hampered cueing that can get the black out. So he is way out of position here. He's going to have to reroute something here. He's going to have to pull something out of the bag. He does have a chance to go into this black, but... That was always the problem. It was never guaranteed to come out nicely. And my word, has it not come out nicely. Yeah, I don't know what he can do here. It's a very tough, tough shot. I mean, seconds. can he jack the queue up and play the red off the yellow into the left centre? Can he do it without jacking the queue up? Well, he's tried to cut it. That was extremely ambitious from Matt Steeper. And it brings Scott Anderson once again to the table. This will be one of the scrappier matches I think you're going to see in this year's Champions Cup. Yeah, <laughs> That's a magnificent is. shot. <laughs> He's knocked that in down the rail like it was over the pocket mark. Yeah, brilliant opening pot there. I think he'd like to see it stay over the bag because the way the white landed put him in a good position. But now he's going to be forced to take these on. And he's missed the yellow. Look where that yellow has gone. Yeah, the yellow's gone safe. The cue ball's been left in a fairly prime position for Matt Steeper as well. He can, he can knock the red he's closest to up to the top left. And actually, if he stuns that, he's perfect on the left hand of those two reds up to the top right as well. 10 seconds. Just like that. Just that last positional shot to worry about. Been a couple of times now in this group tonight where Matt Steeper has fallen f foul on his last positional shot. I would say he's got pretty much the perfect angle here. This is all about the pace. Yeah, and he got a similar shot to, to this wrong in the first frame. So he needs to be getting this one right this time. Oh, he's overdone the side. He's overdone that by a long way. To the point where actually it's come quite nice for a double. But that is certainly not what he was playing on. Oh, but that is nailed by Matt Steeper. Right. He takes a 3-2 lead. Well, well, well. It looked like he'd uh, got it all wrong again, Mark, but he came up with a big shot at a crucial moment. Yeah, he'll be pleased to see that double going because uh, I'm sure uh, where that mistake would have took him. Um, just overrun it once again. He 
three two ahead. We are going to see all six frames for the first time tonight. And you've got to say, Matt's probably quite a heavy favourite now, isn't he? Yeah, there's going to be his break as well. But he's not had the prettiest of tables to Follow go at, has he? When he's broken Matt's off. The break. So he'll just be In hoping for a ball. Two. Try and get some control. Time running. Oh, has he? He's made a ball, that's for sure. It's still a bit awkward. Probably one of his better tables to come to. <laughs> well, yeah, it is, but how untidy is it again? It's just nothing is going to be easy for him tonight. He's going to have to work very hard for every frame that he, he's going to try and win. Ten seconds. Extension called. Using all the time available to him, he takes his extension. Quite a common tactic for players to, to take their extension after the break. Gives themselves a chance to work out their route. And I think Matt still has a fair amount of work to do here. Yeah, these are far from easy. Because he's making these doubles look easy. That's one fact. Yeah, he's certainly found his range with those, isn't he? And actually, that's a little bit ominous for... Well, he's got just the one match left, hasn't he? Matt Steeper. But uh, Jake Dillon knew, love. If he's watching this, he'll know not to leave him a double. But maybe you can just leave him the straight pot. That is poor, if we're honest. This time, though, it's Scott Anderson's turn to come to the table and probably wonder what on earth to do. Does this yellow sneak up to that top right? Can he cover the pocket? Well, he hasn't done anything. What That's he's a, done is give the table back to Matt Steeper. That's a proper nothing shot, that one, isn't it? Wow. What's he done there? I, yeah. I'm not even sure what he was trying, Mark. Well, it was very careless, whatever he was trying. And Matt Steeper, he's going to be trying to take these out. And the way Matt's played that shot there suggests to me that that yellow might have gone up to the top right, that that Scott just pushed onto the rail. And he's overdone this. I mean, that was a nice little flick there off the red. Again, because he's overrun it a little bit. But it's not turned out too bad. But how is he going to get the position? Well, you can see him looking there. He wants to leave what will be his penultimate red a little bit thinner. So the cue ball comes off and cannons into the yellow just below, below the black. Oh, well, he's... That's not the shot I expected. <laughs> He's played it rather well. He wants to be able to get to the middle of the cue ball here, Mark, and I'm not convinced he can. No, definitely not. I'm not sure what he can do. What can he do here? I mean, He's going to have to draw it back. Is he going to leave seconds. a thin clip on the red? But what's he going to do with the black afterwards? He's played the position well, but where is the black going to go? Now, surely the only place it goes is the left centre, unless he can move something. But <laughs> how'd you get there? Ten seconds. Well, he's tried with loads of check side to, to leave it on the left centre. It hasn't worked. His doubles have gone pretty well so far, but cushion first. This is a much tougher proposition. It's the only option he's got, though.
And he didn't hit that with any conviction at all. Worst news for Matt Steeper. He has left Scott Anderson right at the top end of the table in the balk area. Right on the worst of his yellows. Scott's just got to work his way round now. He's, he's not finished ideal. And he does have that yellow over the left-hand side. That's a, a tricky ball to get to. And because of that, he's played the safety. He has left Matt. Another chance to come cushion first, perhaps. And try and make this black. Time out. Total snooker. Time running. Matt Steep has had two or three chances in the match to to fluke one out of a snooker. Ten seconds. Will he take this one? Oh my word, what a shot that is Great. by Matt Steeper. Cushion first, Scott Anderson gave him the chance and he took it with a plomb. That is a wonderful shot. And what a wonderful way to win your first match in this year's Champions Cup. Matt Steeper beats Scott Anderson by four frames to two. That was a stunner. Yeah, that, well, what do we say? Scott is going home. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of his uh, Champions Cup run, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, we've not seen the best of Scott Anderson, but no doubt he's going to bounce back. Yeah, don't forget, he's still got one game to play, though, hasn't he? In our final game this evening, hasn't he? Yeah, well, he's going to be no, playing, he's playing don't you? the number one seed, <laughs> Liam Dunst, the world number one. Unbelievable. I think the next match is we've got, Ian we've got Liam Dunster against New Love, the Butcher. Both won 4 0 the first two games, didn't they? That's going to be, this is important, the next game, isn't it, then, really? Yeah, it certainly is, and it's going to really sort of tee him up of, of, of going to be this Group A winner, the first winner of the Champions Cup this year. You think this match is going to. Well, definitely. Uh, whoever wins this will now win this group. That is a fact. Really? So, yeah, they've got to. So they're going right. to be in such great sort of position. They're going to have to play Scott Anderson, who's lost both his matches already. You know, Scott's got nothing to lose. Yeah. Um, Steve Steeple played well at Arrow, didn't he? Yeah, he looked very steady. Yeah. He, he was the outsider as well, wasn't he? Seven or four. Bit of value there if you played at home. But uh, this match then, this is what it's all about. Now, you had one of your picks here, one of your pick for picks early. Yeah. I don't know if you want to show the viewers at home, show them the slip. I've ripped it up. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> oh, for this one. For this one. So this one, yeah, I've gone for uh, Liam Dunster to beat New Love 10 to 11. So, 10 to 11, that was yeah, a fair I do, price. I do think 11. that. I don't uh, think that would be there now, will it, that 10 to 11? Don't forget, all these prices we're showing you was early on that we found out off our betting partners were the prices. So the prices can change naturally. But Marky here, Dunster to beat New Love 10 to 11. You know something, Mark? I'm going to join you. I fancy this as well, 10 to 11. I was yeah, impressed, yeah. Yeah, I was impressed by the by the Liam in the first match. But also, you've got to say you was impressed with New Love 4 0 as well, haven't you? So it'd be a good match, won't it? It definitely is. And this is one match where I've been waiting to see. It, it's going to have everything, this is. But I think it's going to need a clinical style. Jake's going to have to really bring his best ear to play, you know, to actually beat Liam. Because what we saw from Liam in that first match against Matt Steeper was superb. Yeah, what can Jake do? He can't give Liam any chances. This is a classic, isn't it? This is going to be a spectacular you know, so one. Absolutely. I can't wait to see this, can you? No, really Unbelievable. Can't. I'll tell you what we'll do then. If you fancy playing at home, have a go. You've got about three minutes. Three minutes. Your better. Yeah. And then we'll come back to you in three minutes for, as Marky said, the classic. Thank you, gents. When you're ready. Please lag for break. You join us just ahead of the fourth match of the night in the very first group here at the Sporty Stuff TV Champions Cup. It's Dunster v New Love. These two Dunster so far have been superb. Both of them winning their first matches four frames to nil. And Mark Pickworth joins me in the commentary box once again. Well... You said before the match, Mark, that this is going to be a classic. Is that still how you see it going? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this this has got whoever wins this is going to win tonight's group. Or well, they're going to be they're going to be in such a good position. It's going to be hard for them not to win the group. 
So it's going to be really important. This is going to be, well, we saw Liam. I mean, he has been sort of sat out for a while now. Can he come back and, you know, have the same sort of sort of form that he showed in the first match? Champions Cup, Group A, match four. Best of six frames. First frame, Liam Dunster to break. Time running. Well, a lot is going to decide, be decided rather, on the breaks in this match, I feel. It's Liam Dunster to get us underway. Liam, the only one of our four players tonight, Mark, so far employing the cut break, as opposed to playing it straight into the front ball. It's not getting the splits necessarily that some of the other players have got, is it? Um, particularly Scott Anderson, his break has actually been pretty phenomenal and left him wonderful chances. Liam's have been a bit more tricky Ten when seconds. he's come to the table for the first time. Yeah, there seems to be. You know, the league table doesn't lie, doesn't matter how good your break is sometimes. If you don't take the chances, you're going to get punished. And Scott's definitely had the chances and he'll be kicking himself tonight. I think Liam is the one player who, when he comes to a table like this, you still feel like he's going to get Ten them. And perhaps you don't have that, that feeling about the other three, certainly the way things have gone. I think, I think Liam was trying to cover the pocket there. Hasn't worked. He's got a plant on still. Yeah, and that's a rare mistake from Liam because he normally covers them pockets really well. You don't normally see them mistakes from him. Do you think he's been forced into going game now because he's got a plant seconds. to the right centre? He's still got a problem it's yellow in the bottom half of the table. But the more balls he pops, the the less opportunity he has to tie up the frame and, and take control of it. Yeah, he certainly has. Yeah, he's going to be forced here. Oh, what a shot this is. Where's he pulled this from? It is superb. Oh, my word, Liam Dunster. <laughs> that is... Oh, well, it's magnificent. That he's is class. That. class. It, it really is. It really is such high class from the Scotsman. I mean, if... Ten seconds. If this shot goes well, all of a sudden they're all there. But it hasn't. And actually, I don't think Liam will be too disappointed with that. No, he won't, because that black never came out either. He didn't really... You know, he never got into it. The timing just sort of didn't look right, did it? But, you know, he's in massive Ten control seconds. now. But, oh, what's happened there? Well, I can't believe it. You sound like you can't believe it. And <laughs> Jake Newlove looks like he can't believe it. it just makes he me wonder no if he's uh, pinched the, uh, the pocket and uh, it's just hit the jaw and... And when you do it, the jaws on these at pace, they do come out. Ten seconds. Well, Liam's got a bit of a free go at that difficult yellow down the rail. He hasn't made the most of that opportunity, actually. Has Jake got enough angle on this red to the left centre to, to work something out of that, that black and the two reds on the bulk line? And if he's got to play it with pace, does he have the confidence seconds. to do that after the previous shot? Well, there's your answer, Dan. He's not played it with any pace, but this red must pass into the top right. But this, what angle has he got on it? Can he get the red out? Can he get the black out? What can he do with it? Well, he's going to have to really punch it if this is going to come out well. He has, and it hasn't. Yeah, you just feel that like he was just asking a little bit too much of the uh, the cannon into there because he didn't have enough angle. But the one thing I would table. say, Mark, is that 
Liam's left that yellow so far in the heart of the pocket that there's definitely a potential for the skill shot there from Jake. Yeah, there is. And I think that is, is going to be his only option, especially with this angle on this red. Yeah, has he, has he got enough angle to take this up off the, on and off the top cushion and try and leave himself straight on the skill shot? Needs to travel. Needs to travel. It hasn't travelled. Oh, I don't think... I don't think he's on there. Neither does Jake. Called. It's going to be cushion first of some description. Yeah, and I think he's looking at a cocked hat here. So he's going to be playing this into the left centre, I think. That's what he's looking at, off the cushion. Hold on to your seats. If this comes off, the roof will erupt. That's quite a long way wide in the end. And Jake Dylan Newlove gives up an easy, easy opportunity to Liam Dunster. He's not missing these, is he, Mark? No, he certainly has. And, you know, Jake, you know, credit to him. He had to take that on. He had to try and find a pocket for it. He hasn't. And he's just missed that opportunity now. And uh, here is Liam. He'll do what Liam does. And he should take these out. Just Jake just left himself such an awkward angle on that penultimate red. And uh, he had to really finish right behind that last red if he was going to make that as a skill shot. And uh, in in trying to be so precise, I think he let it get away from him. Liam going through his routine for every single shot. That is the way he plays. He is metronomic. Every single shot. Look at this. This You think this is a simple black? But this could be the most difficult shot in the world. And Liam Dunster would approach it in exactly the same way. And normally with exactly the same results. And here we go again. Liam Dunster. That's five frames on the trot tonight now for Liam. Hasn't lost a frame yet. Jake Dylan Newlove needs to stop him somehow, but he won't do it by missing chances like that, Mark. No, he certainly won't. And, uh, I mean, it weren't the easiest chances. There was always things that could go wrong. But he's finding himself 1-0 down, and that's not where you want to be when you're playing the world number one. No, you are right. It, it was a very tough chance for Jake. No question of that, but I think the, the biggest disappointment for him will be that he didn't give it a chance. He, he never got on that skill shot. He underhit the positional shot, and I, I think he'd have backed himself if he managed to get on the skilly. Frame two. Jake Dillon, new love to break. Trailing one frame to nil. Time running. Foul. From bad to worse for Jake Newlove. He misses a chance one in frame shot. one. One visit. And absolutely Finally. hammers the break. Only to see that cue ball kicked in off into that top right pocket. And Liam Dunster comes to the table with not only a chance, but a free shot to make his life even easier. 10 seconds. 
Yeah, it Extension is. I mean, when, when the white ball goes that close to the corner, there's always a chance of it being kicked in off. And it was a little bit of a loose white. You'd have liked that to come down the, the middle of the table. And that has not gone right for Liam Dunster. Now, I like the idea there from Liam because actually, if those two balls that have gone together on the side rail, the red and the yellow, had split apart, He'd have had a good chance on either colour. Um, the problem now <laughs> is that they're causing a problem for either colour set. Ten seconds. Liam deciding that yellows is the way to go here. Do those two yellows that are together plant mark it? It doesn't look like it to me. Yeah, I mean, if they did, I mean, I, I think that it just clips the red. Um, Ten well, seconds. Again, we're going to find out pretty soon. But he's still going to, even if they did plant, he's still going to have that yellow. That's near the red. But he's going to get it out here, is he? Well, that was a very nice plant. That was, there was a fair bit of distance between those two balls. Has he got the angle now to go into the red and yellow on the side rail? And if he does, what's it going to be left on afterwards? Ten seconds. Oh, that's so clever. That is such a clever shot from Liam Dunster. He knows exactly what he's done there. You, you called it earlier, Mark. The plant went straight into the red. Therefore, if he used the plant as a development, he breaks the red out of the way. A stroke of genius from the Scotsman. Yeah, we're seeing quite a lot of that Ten tonight seconds. from him. He's coming up with all... He's, he's like one of the best shot makers in the world now. Yeah, it's fair to say that's not what he's most well known for. But, um, well, when you're the world number one... You have more than one weapon in your armoury. And he is showing us the full range tonight. This is brilliant stuff from Liam Dunster so far. What do you think now, Mark, the chances are of Liam Dunster going essentially 12-0 through these three games? Well, I can't even think we were even talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Still got to win another seven frames on the spin. So well, it's about to be six, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'll give you that one down. But seven on the spin, it would be berserk, wouldn't it? Be berserk. That'd be twelve on the spin. I'm just uh, thinking about his last opponent is going to be Scott Anderson, who, let's be fair, has missed a hatful of chances tonight. Uh, probably isn't feeling the most confident after. Losing 4 0 and then 4 2 in that previous game to Matt Steeper. You know, Liam, Liam gets these last couple against Jake, and I think that's more like on top. Yeah, I suppose yeah, that's the way that you're looking at it. Uh, Shadow and uh, Scott's um, sort of confidence has been shot to bits with his first two, uh, sorry, his first performance in both his matches. But Liam Dunster, is anybody going to stop him? Someone's going to stop him tonight. It's going to have to be Jake Dillon, new love, and it's going to have to start now. Because in order to win this match, he has got to win the last four frames on the bounce. Frame three. Liam Dunster to break, leading two frames to nil. Time running. You wouldn't fancy that against anyone in the world, but particularly this man. Not, a, not the worst looking table, but again, it's just a little bit messy. There's just some work to do here for Liam. The yellows look nice, apart from the two in the bottom half of the table closest to the left Ten rail. Seconds. 
extension cord. I don't think the reds would have been too bad, but the one on the left-hand side in the on the bulk line is pretty awkward. Yeah, I think yellows is definitely the right choice here. He's trying to get them out straight away. And he's only got one thing on his mind here, Liam Dunster, and that is to go 3-0 ahead. Yeah, Liam's looking so formidable. It's uh, it's night and day to his... We mentioned it earlier, Mark. He was a, a shock first round. Ten seconds. Exit in the previous Champions Cup last year, losing 7-5 to Ross Fernie. Uh, six... 6-5 rather but this time around well he looks like the man to beat already yeah he looks in great form and he wants that title back he lost it last year he wants it back he's going to take some beating but there is a lot of good players left in this yet and is Jake Newlove is he still in this competition can he beat Liam Dunster I mean at the moment you can't beat him if you're not on the table. Well, if Liam takes out these last three yellows and the black, then no, he can't. But um, Jake would still be in it by virtue of that 4-0 victory in the first match. Uh, we've spoken about the format a little bit. But it's, uh, it's not over, is it? Even if you lose a match in this format, it, there is still potentially everything to play for. 10 seconds. And of course, if these two draw, then that brings up a whole host of interesting possibilities. So Jake's perfectly capable of reeling off three in a row. Is going to have to be three in a row. Liam Dunster works his way beautifully three. round yet another clearance. That is seven on the spin for him now. He won his first match 4 0, and he's 3 0 up in the second. Yeah, that's the big thing. Just like a freight train. <laughs> yeah, that's the big thing. Seven on the bounce, none against. He, he, he's on fire. There he is. I mentioned it after the very first match well, between Liam and Matt Steep, and Matt had a pretty good opportunity in the very first frame that he failed to take, and after that, Liam pretty much blew him away. But how costly has it been for everyone else tonight that Matt didn't take that chance? Because Liam has just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And if Matt had taken that first frame, you just never know. The four. whole match could have been different. The Jake whole Dylan, night you left the break. Trailing three frames to nil. Yeah, he certainly could have as well. Time running. But, uh, well, any one winner now? Surely there is. Well, there's only one potential winner. But we still do have the potential of the draw. And if Jake Newlove going to realise that potential, then it needs to start now. That is a quality break. Ten seconds. You have to say, if it wasn't for that red on the left-hand rail, you would be calling these reds as, as gone, pretty much, wouldn't you, Mark? But um, that is an awkward, awkward ball. Yeah, it is. I mean, what, what's he going to do to get on it? It's going to be his last ball, then, if he's coming down this way. Don't think he had any choice at all. At least... This plant's not quite there yet. This is missable. Very nicely played.
I would argue he's just finished the wrong side of that red as well. There's a lot of distance for the cue ball to have to cover here for him to finish nicely on that red. This is such a huge shot. And he's done the best he can with it. He's left it long. It's quite a nice angle to just drift out for the black. But it doesn't matter if you drift out for the black if you miss the pot by quite that much of a margin. Yeah, the Dunster has the chance to complete back-to-back -back whitewashes. Extension called. Yeah, that was a long way off there for Jake Dillon. New love. Doesn't look like Liam's going to need two opportunities either. That's a perfect positional shot for the first shot. Leaves him a great angle to screw back into these two yellows. The last of his problems, really. This is the only thing that can go wrong for Liam now. And it has. That's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. How close is he to the yellow? It looks like he's finished right on top of that. I don't know if he can cut that back. If he can't, does he have a cut back to the left centre? Does Ten he have seconds. an easy place to hide the cue ball? Well, there's your answer. He's tried to hide the white. I think he's left Jake a gap of sorts. I think Jake can hit that red. He's looking at the double up to the top right. And this is do or die now for the butcher. Ten seconds. Oh, has he fluked it? He hasn't fluked it, surely. Oh, oh. my word. <laughs> It was so close and then it ended up knocking the cue ball in. When it's not One your day, shot. it is not your day. And <laughs> Jake Dillon, new love, Simon. it is not your day. Liam Dunster is left to mop up for back-to-back -back whitewashes. Well, he can't believe his luck, but Jake's had his chances in this match. Only a couple, granted he would have expected to have taken at least one of them as it stands Liam Dunster is going to guarantee himself winning this first group of the 2022 Sporty Stuff TV Champions Cup What a start to the new year this is for the duster. I don't think even in his wildest dreams, Liam Dunster would have come to this tournament tonight expecting to win 4-0, 4-0. And the match. But Liam that to win is exactly what he's done. Jake Newlove and Matt Steeper have both fallen by the wayside. It falls to Scott Anderson to see if he can take a frame off the duster. It's another fabulous performance from the Scotsman. Oh, that was fantastic, wasn't it, Mark? Again, eh? what, a, what a player this boy is. Yeah, he 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 just seems to go from strength to strength. Everything he's doing, he's doing it right. He's so methodical around the pit, you know, around the table. Oh, I, I, I've got to take it out off to him. That's you know what I can't believe, Mark. Right? You know, bookies. 
they usually get it right all the time. <laughs> that was the price you could have had this morning. Dunce that have beat New Love, just under even money, 10 to 11. Well, surely, I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not an expert at Paul, you are. Surely that price was wrong this morning. There was some value out there for the, for the punters, surely, this morning, wasn't there? Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah, if anybody got on early doors this morning. And, and I believe, I don't know who it was, but one of our betting partners went 13 to 2, Dunster, to win all these three matches this evening. Imagine if you were sitting on a docket like that now, one of these little slips here, one of the betting slips, 13 to 2. So now we've got one match to go, the last match tonight, Dunster Lee Scotty Anderson. What a lovely, what a lovely feeling that would be. It's like money, I know, look, we know everything in this in this world, we don't know what's around the corner, but if you got that slip in your pocket, Dunster to win all these three matches, Liam, you'd fancy him to beat Scotty Anderson in the last one. This boy's he's practically unbeatable, isn't he, Mark? Well, the way he's playing at the moment, it's, it's great to see him playing like this. I mean, it, it can't be very good to, as the opponent sat in the chair, just watching and admiring the way. Well, you play, Paul. You're, you, you are, you know, you, you're in the tournament. You know what it's like to play. What's it like to sit there? What's it like to sit there, Mark? When you're playing against someone like Liam, and you know he's the world's number one, and I bet you're sitting there thinking, "Give me a chance, give me a chance." But when you get a chance, you've only got to make one little mistake, like the boy did there, the butcher, and he's in on the balls again, isn't he? And it four 0 again. It's fascinating, you know. I'm enjoying this. Oh yeah, really. I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it. I like watching a master at work, and uh, I used to be a master, you know, once upon a time. <laughs> I've got two O levels at school, you know that. One was for finding fish and chip shops and one was for finding betting shops and we're in a betting office now. Right, what have we got in the next game, Mark? So we've got Matt Steeper against Jake Newlove. So how Jake's going to come back from that after losing 4-0 to Liam, I'm not sure. But he's, he's the favourite in this match against Matt Steeper. Well, Matt Steeper's done nothing wrong tonight. He I know he's got beat 4-0 in the first match, but he, he won his next match, didn't he? Yeah, so yeah, he did. He could finish on four on two wins as well here, yeah they're both won one lost one and uh, yeah. whoever wins this they're, they're going to finish second in the group yeah. so it's a sort of play for so has he definitely won there the group well no no it's nothing's over yet nothing i mean if, if so we, Ian, uh, liam's not actually past the post yet is it? not quite yet no no definitely not yet can yeah, I have a he's bet still got to win his match. Can but, I have a bet with him I mean, he's, he's, it? you know he's massive favorite to win his last match against mm -hmm. scott anderson no offense to scott yeah. Yeah. and the way that liam's playing you can't see anybody beating him but this game here, this is to get second place, and this has still got to be, you know, get a chance to get into the, the next stage. And you know what they win if they win the final later on? Ten big uns. <laughs> Ten grand for the winner, isn't it? Eh? It certainly You're is. only a 40 to one chance to win the final, you know. Oh, you've been looking at my odds. I know, you're yeah, only a 40 to one chance, and you <laughs> was 50 to one early. So, oh, was uh, that? Right. Yeah, so 40 you had to a quid one. On look, at our, look at our betting partners tomorrow, you never know. We might have one one boy listening tonight and he might say, go on, I'll lay you clickety-click, 66 to 1. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right, let's get on to our fifth match and uh, I'll fancy this one anyway. So I'll tell you what we do. We've got three minutes if you want to play at home. If you fancy having a little bet here, see you in about three minutes' time. Thank you, gents. When you're ready, please lag for break. Welcome back to the fifth of our matches here tonight on Sporty Stuff TV. It's the IPA Champions Cup and it's Matt Steeper up against Jake Newlove. Matt Steeper wins the leg. Fair to state that Matt didn't have much of the early going against Liam Dunstan. Lost his first match 4-0, but he did come roaring back against Scott Anderson in his second by four frames to two. Jake, the other way round, won his first 4-0 and then was beaten 4-0 in our previous match by Liam Dunster. Mark Pickworth is again with me in the commentary box. Do you think that Jake's had time to get over that last match, Mark? Well, how do you get over it? I think that's the question, isn't it? And um, taking another 4-0 drubbing is uh, going to be hard to take. But they've both been beaten 4-0 here by Liam Dunster. So they've both got one win under the belt as well by beating Scott. But who is going to win this? Because whoever wins this has got a good chance of finishing in second place. I would argue that this is Group A, match probably... five, best of six frames. First frame, Matt Steeper to break. Time running. In my opinion, at least, that this is the tightest match of the night. This is the amateur number four. 
in Jake Newlove up against the amateur number eight in Matt Steeper. Um, very little has separated them all season. And I, I, I think this is probably your best bet for the draw. Well, you've said it there, haven't you? But yeah, I suppose the way the matches have gone on tonight, then yeah, you probably could look at this would be the draw. But you wouldn't have predicted that at the very start. No, seconds. perhaps not. Extension call. Into the first frame we go then, and it's Matt Steeper with the first chance at the table. <laughs> and, uh, well, we've said it all night long, haven't we, Mark? Matt Steeper comes to the table. It's messy. It does not look very, very nice at all. No, this is always a problem, isn't there, for when Matt's at the table. And he's having to try and figure out, he's having to work hard for his frames. I'm just thinking if he can obviously put this yellow, this, sorry, this red into Ten the left seconds. hand middle. Can he leave himself an angle on that red so he can play it off the yellow into the middle? He's miscued it. I'm not sure what he's tried there. Just try to power it round. No, I, I think we might have had a clue if, if the miscue hadn't happened, but no, that definitely <laughs> threw us all off. Just looking very suspiciously at that tip. Hope he hasn't damaged it. Extension cool. We've all been there, haven't we, Mark? Yeah, we've all taken like, little chunks out of our tips, etc. And uh, hopefully not too much damage. Of course, there will be no time to for any running repairs. <laughs> this is the last match of the evening for both of these players. Oh, Jake Dillon, new love. Oh. What have you done there? Well, I think he's just shown his disgust One at that shot. shot. One visit. That was a time running. A very, very poor error. Yeah, very careless. And uh, one. Well, we've seen a few careless sort of shots from Jake tonight, but not. We don't normally see him when he's on the tour and that. And what can Matt line up here to make life easier? He's got a free shot to open everything up. Not, not convinced about that one, if I'm honest, Mark. I feel like he could have been a bit more adventurous there. He's just got rid of a yellow that, that was sort of in the way, but there are so many bigger problems than that. Yeah, there is, but he's, he's going about his work here. Oh, they're over the pockets. Well, I imagine he's going to take on a plant here, is he? Red onto red to the right centre. Oh no, that goes past. And that'll explain why he's left that white there. Because that red did look a little bit tighter than we thought. You can see his pattern starting to emerge. Um, the red just below the black. If, you know, actually, to a certain extent now, this is four straight shots. Because he can stun the one up to the top right, take the one down the rail, you know, push it through five, six inches. The black is obviously going up to this pocket here, the, the same one he's just potted that red in up to the top right. And to be fair, if he lands nice and straight on this red to the left centre, he should be able to finish straight on it, right in behind it. Shouldn't be a problem. I imagine, Mark, he'd like to be a fraction further off the cushion with this shot. He's kind of got to top the cue ball through a little bit. He's going to be leaving a bit more angle on the black. Ten seconds. If he's not careful, he could make this missable. Yeah. 
and obviously when you're on the cushion you're going to get a little bit more pace on the ball and that's what's happened he's overrun that bike god good six inches yeah i think he'd, he'd love to have been able to run into that yellow to the to the right but he couldn't now this is a huge shot Oh, he's nailed that. That's a wonderful Great. shot from Matt Steeper. Not the first time in this tournament tonight that he has taken on a tough black and got his rewards. He leads by one frame to nil. Jake Dillon, new love, needs to get out of his slump. Yeah, he has five frames on the spin now, Jake. It's just about, I mean, Matt looked really good there, the way he went around his clearance there. Everything was in position apart from the black, but what a pot that was. Yeah, really did pull that one out of the fire. Piles the pressure on Jake Dillon, new love. Frame two. Jake Dillon, new love to break. Trailing one frame to nil. Time running. Matt Steeper has shown a lot of resolve after losing his first match tonight by four frames to nil. It's Jake's turn now to show that same kind of steel. We know he's got it in the locker. We've seen it before on the IPA. Former amateur champion. He is a wonderful player. Yeah, and that's a lovely little break there. I mean, both these colour sets, they've all got pockets. Ten seconds. If you can get through to this yellow, get good position. Extension cool. I mean, I'm not sure if I like yellows, to be honest, just with that yellow that's just near that middle pocket. I think if that, I think if the red went past the yellow, he'd definitely take that, but I'm just not convinced that it does. Well, that yellow you spoke about, Mark, can he snick that in the middle? It looks awfully tight. Yeah, he does. I mean, it's, I mean, it's one of them that he's just got a drop in. That's why he's rerouting here. a nicely controlled shot. I think that uh, his problem ball is still that yellow over on the left hand side though Mark. If, if he leaves that till last, how do you get on the black? It's so awkward. Well he's going to need to leave himself the right angle so he can get onto this right hand side of the table. So that will leave him with the black so it possibly could be his last ball here. I don't, I don't see a way of getting on it soon. I do wonder if, with that previous shot, he has cleared the pocket for the black to go to the bottom right. I think he might have cleared a path there, and if he has, then it's a lot safer bet to leave that yellow on the left-hand side to last, because if you stun it in, you've got a straight shot on the black. So, for me, this clearance now is all about whether that black goes to the bottom right. Ten seconds. Well, perhaps it doesn't, or perhaps Jake just sees the game a different way. But he's digging a hole here, and he has got to come up with a big, big shot now. It's just a pot. This is a tough shot. Ten seconds. Position as well. Very high tariff. Wow. That is pure class from Jake Dillon, new love. Yeah, that was a lovely shot. I mean, he didn't play to hit the jaw, but, he, you know, just below the jaw, and he just missed it by a whisker. So positional now is key. It's just dropping it in, and that's the right shot to play. And a good clearance this has. A very, Great. very good clearance from Jake Newlove. He stops the rot. 
gets his first frame after five on the bounce against him. And, uh, well, one each, and it's very much game on. Steeper respond to that brilliant clearance from Jake Dillon. New love. Frame three. Matt Steeper to break. Scores are tied. One frame all. Time running. Matt's break hasn't been all that friendly so far tonight. Of course, whoever wins this match will guarantee themselves second place in this group. They both uh, won one, lost one. Reset the shot clock, please. So it's very much all to play for. I don't think he can quite believe how badly his breaks have come out tonight, Mark. He, he hasn't really struck seconds. them badly. They've just come out dry or awkward. Yeah, they have, and I think if he ever watches this night's of action back, he'd have nightmares. I, I don't think he'd be watching the first match, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, since then, he might do. He might. Might depend on the, the result of this one as to whether he, he gets on Sky Plus tomorrow. Ten seconds. Nice little result there for Jake. He's just not those yellows safe because these reds are by no means easy. You can see him lining up what he wants to do next. The, the red on the ball climb will only go to the top left. And it's this red in the bottom half of the table next to the yellow, just to the right hand side, that's causing him all sorts of problems. And the way he's gone about this clearance mark, the only way I can see him moving it is off his penultimate red, which means he's going to be trusting to luck a little bit to whether he lands on that awkward red or not. Ten seconds. But he's got to get there first. Ten seconds. Matt Steeper. Extension looking call. at those two yellows on the right hand side, he's he's looking to see if they're a plant or if they can be made into a plant. It looks pretty good from here. Yeah, I don't think that's the problem there. It's the other two yellows on this left hand side. Yeah, I think this is a straightforward plant, I think. Yes it is. Of course he's still got a problem as well, hasn't he, with the the red that we were talking about is Jake's problem, Paul. Well, that's a problem because of the yellow, but Matt's yellow is also a problem because of Jake's red. I don't think he could get the potting angle on that. Ten seconds. Well, this looks to be a very attacking shot. Well, I think he'll take that because that certainly wasn't what he was trying to open out. He was trying to open out the red and yellow in the bottom half of the table. Move that yellow into somewhere where it went. But he's come very fortunately off that middle pocket jaw. And although, it, I mean, they're not nice Ten by seconds. any stretch of the imagination. They're certainly easier than they were. You've got to say he's unlucky there, isn't he? That is a bit brutal, isn't it? Yeah. That is that is highly unlucky. Yeah, I mean, I was expecting him to hit both of them yellows there, to hit one thin and then miss the other. It was, well, it's impossible. But it's happened. It's very harsh. Uh, the problem is, I, I think he might Ten be on seconds. the yellow to the bottom left. 
But if he is, there's no value in potting it. He can't. There's no way to clear up from here. I think that's an attempt at a double. Either way, he's laid down a bit of a gauntlet here for Jake Newlove. Because Jake's got more problems. The, the red nearest to him doesn't go. He's just going to try and get the pocket, I think. Off the cushion, off the yellow. That's a very good shot. I guess, Mark, this frame's all about containment now for Matt. Um, Jake's in a huge amount of control. And in a way, Ten Matt's seconds. just got to try and stop Jake getting an easy way to, to get that difficult red out. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to get that red out. I mean, he can hit it out. I mean, is that is that what he's going to do? And just try and leave Matt absolutely nothing. Just hampered on top of this yellow, is he? Yeah. That's a really, really clever shot. It's, uh, I think that's the sort of shot that a lot of players wouldn't see, Mark. Um, the sort of shot that, you know, because... It doesn't really look like that much of a safety at, at very first glance. But my seconds. word, <laughs> he's put Matt in all sorts of trouble here. That was a nice effort from Matt, but even if he'd made that, he was still massively odds against for the finish. The next shot would have been equally as tough. And now Jake Newlove can come to the table with a pretty straightforward chance. And now a very straightforward chance. Easy done by the butcher. Jake Newlove with just this simple black. In it goes to take a two frame to one lead over Matt Steeper. This is the battle for second place in Group A. Liam Dunster has been exceptional. <laughs> There's already won the group with his first two matches. As we can see from the graphic there, Liam Dunster at the top of the pile. Played two, one two, frames one eight, frames lost zero. Obviously Scott Anderson should be at the bottom of that table. Jake Dylan Newlove and Matt Steeper are fighting it out for second place as we speak. Mark, Liam has just been unbelievable tonight, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, before we started, uh, we didn't think he was going to go pretty much. We, we thought that he, he might, he, he could go unbeaten, but for him not to concede a frame yet. Jake Dillon, you well, we didn't break. expect that one. Leading two frames to one. Time running. Yeah, I mean, you could make the argument that this shorter format kind of suits the upset. It, it it suits, not to be disrespectful to Steeper, New Love or Anderson, but it suits the lesser player. Uh, because in a shorter race, there's more chance of, you know, the, 
Dunster not, not getting Ten as seconds. many opportunities, Six not getting as many four. chances. But he certainly put that to bed tonight because Liam Dunster has been phenomenal. Jake Newlove at the table now, though. And with that first red sneaking in, this is a brilliant chance for 3-1. Yeah, just going back to Liam Dunstan, remember the first frame he played. He should have lost that first frame. You know, when he left the yellow over the pocket and then it sort of dropped after five seconds, etc. Ben replaced it. And Scott should have cleared up. Sorry, it's not Scott. Matt should have cleared up. Yeah, Matt, it, in his defence, hasn't had the best of the chances tonight, but there are certainly two or three opportunities he, he will look back on and think, yeah, I should have done better there. Um, I think, overall, he'll probably be disappointed with, with his night, whatever happens now. Uh, even if he, he comes back here against Jake and, and wins or claims a draw, I think Matt will be... Disappointed with his night's work. Jake Newlove, though, has responded very well to falling behind early doors in this match, especially after the 4 0 crushing that Liam Dun Dunster. Gave him in the match previous. This has been an impressive show of resolve from Jake. Yeah, it's been a very comfortable clearance, this one. Frame. Comfortable indeed. Jake Dylan Newlove now 3 1 up in this. Well, I'm going to say first to four, but best of six. So Matt now cannot win this game. There are two frames left to be played. Jake is certainly in the hot seat. Yeah, I mean, can we see a way back here for Matt? Need to make it. At, uh, he's, got, he's got to win the next two frames. It's as simple as that, just to get the draw. But he will finish in third place if that happens. Frame five. Jake will be ahead on Matt difference. The break. Trailing three frames yeah. to one. Time running. Jake getting to three first in this match has guaranteed second place in the group for him now, regardless. to his 4-0 victory over Scott Anderson. Well, that's a shock. That is... Uh, that is one of the worst shots of the night. From Matt Steeper's point of view, and perhaps just a. Do you think he knows the knows the table mark? He knows he's he's finished third now. Do you think that's kind of a little bit of Matt throwing in the towel there with that shot? Yeah, absolutely, uh, without a doubt. I, mean, I think he knew whoever got to three first was guaranteed. Well, I mean Matt wouldn't have been guaranteed second, but he'd have known that Jake would have been. So yeah, that, no doubt that's that's on his mind. Yeah, I think what's Very going to happen nice. here is he's probably going to lose this match now. Yeah, that was a lovely little positional shot there from Jake. He just used that yellow just to eke as much movement out of the cue ball as he could. Get himself onto this red. He'd love to be a bit straighter on it. Ten but seconds. Extension called. It's not too bad, is it? He's just got to avoid that yellow. Just slow this down, this cue ball down. And I would say that is pretty much perfect. Ooh, 
Perhaps not. A little thinner than I thought on the plant. Yeah, I'm not sure if this goes. It's a, a very thin snip. Has he got a double? I don't know. I don't know what he's got. I think he might just about be able to cut this back, but where the cue ball goes is anyone's seconds. guess. Oh, it's the double. Oh, it's a peach. It's an absolute beauty from Jake Newlove. It's perfect position as well. That is a great, great shot. And he sends Matt Steeper home. And the match, Jake Dylan Newlove wins Jake four Newlove. to one. A four one winner over Matt Steeper. An excellent performance from the butcher. Nothing he can do to win the group now. And he's certainly given a very good account of himself in his other two matches. Jake Newlove four, Matt Steeper one. Yeah, I got him away, Mitch. That was good. Thank you. Good James. little game. Yeah, it was a good little game. Um, but that's the, probably the most comfortable yeah, I've seen Jake Dylan Newell be tonight. He just sort of relaxed and chilled out. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I he came back well. I think in the last game as well. I think Scotty Anderson. I think he could, you know, in the last game because he's got. It. He, he, he could just the pressure could be off him now, couldn't it, Mark? But I think he's been a bit unlucky. I know you put him up as a. The number two tonight, didn't you? You thought Jake would, you thought like Liam would win, and Jake would be would be second. That's how it's finished now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it One, is. Two, yeah. So Liam's definitely won. Whatever happens this last last match, he's definitely going to go through. Yeah. Yeah, he's on four points now. We're second place, which is Jake Dillon New Love. He's only only on three points. So uh, yeah, Liam Dunster's already through without playing this last match, but so he needs to play it. Before this started, the competition started with all our players that we had in here. Liam was the favourite outright to win it, wasn't he? He was, What yeah. price was he, Mark? Three to one to win. To win the 10 grand and to win the trophy? No, just to win this event one. To win event one? To win event one. Right. To get and the chance of winning the 10,000. And what pound. price would he have been to win the actual final? Well, <laughs> that's that's for a bookie to sort out that one. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't even... I think a few bookies... I bet, I bet, God, he must have been... What, seven to one, eight to one? It would have been as big as that, was it? Yeah, I think but so. But what, overall. What Kevin said earlier tonight, the big names he mentioned that's in the tournament, tomorrow we've got we've got four players tomorrow and like we've got a short short price favourite tomorrow, the boy from Preston. I think he's five to four tomorrow to win to win his group tomorrow. Best of you know, out of four four runners again tomorrow. So it gets better, doesn't it? As we go on. Yeah, you know, and I think the matches will be tighter, weren't it? And tomorrow we won't see no odds on chances to win the group like we've seen with Liam tonight. But uh, I've had a little whisper in my ear that the boy from Preston tomorrow, you know, who I'm talking about. Oh, I do, yeah. He's yeah. about a five to four chance. And, uh, really? Okay. Wow. Good player. Yeah, he is a very good player. Right. Let's get this last match out. Uh, well, done. it is already done and dusted, but we're going to see a champion <laughs> in here, aren't we, as well? And we're going to see Liam again. Could he win 4 0 again? Well, there's no stopping him the way that he's played tonight. And, uh, I mean, against Scott Anderson. <laughs> I don't think it would be 4 0. But he's got nothing to lose, Scott Anderson. He can take a frame off Liam Dunster yeah. tonight. I think he'll have the handcuffs here, Scotty boy. Yeah, and I, I mean, think... to win 12 frames and, and concede. Yeah, I can just see Scott. Phenomenal. I can see Scotty maybe not even, you know, winning the match, but I can see him winning one or two. I think this will be a good little match, the last one. Yeah, I do. Isn't it lovely? Late night viewing, eh? Sporty That's stuff it. TV. And we can still have a bet. If you fancy having a go, you can still get on. I think you've got about three minutes now. We're going to take a break very, very shortly. And don't forget, you've got about three minutes if you want to play on the last match this evening. Absolutely. Thank you, gents. When you're ready, please lag for break. Welcome back to the final match of tonight's Group 1. Scott Anderson wins the lag. Hmm? Yeah, they change it. No problem.
Scott Anderson up against Liam Dunster. Mark Pickworth joins me once again in the commentary box. Well, it's our final match of the night, Mark. Liam's got to be a heavy favourite, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has, but yeah, Scott can let his arm go here, just relax, and are we going to see the first frame that Liam Dunster's going to concede? And just remember, we've been big in Scott up. Scott's probably had the best break of the night, to be honest, but he just hasn't he taken uh, advantage Sixth of it. final match. Best Are we of going six to see frames. that now? Is he going to just, he just needs to relax? Scott Anderson to break. Time running. There you see, it. it's a crushing break. He's done it again, Mark. And honestly, if he'd taken these opportunities he's been given by his own break, we could have a very different story here. Can he take this one and finally hand out a defeat, even just in a single frame, to Liam Dunster, the world number one. He has shown all of his class tonight, but this is such a wonderful opportunity for Scott. Yeah, it's a nice uh, position for Liam to be in. Already know <clears throat> he's already through to uh, stage two. Now by winning this group, but he'll want to win this last match. Trust me. Well, Scott's going to have to find a great position here. Well, I don't think that's quite it. Well, I think he's, he's on still this. on the red to the bottom right. You can see there he's pointing the cue at where he wants the cue ball to come off. He, he wants the cue ball to come off and hold on that yellow there. If he catches it too thin though, he could be in trouble. Well, he was nowhere near it, but he's still got a shot. Trusting to luck getting on the black. Trusting to luck getting on the black and I don't think he's on it. The look tells you the whole story. He's just nudged it in front of the, or in behind the yellow, if you like. Yeah, the body language says it all. I think the only can play is off this yellow and it goes to the top bag, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't oh, know what this look eyeing up. It looks impossible. I, I think you're, Ten I, I think you're right. I think course. that's the shot he's eyeing up. I'm with you. I think this is a one in a million, honestly. I, I can't see how this goes. Not on the pace he's got to play at as well. Oh, it's close, you know. Oh, that brilliant is a phenomenal effort. effort, you have to say. Yeah, brilliant. And, uh, well, how's his luck? It's not great. Uh, Liam's on the yellow to the right centre if he's on nothing else. The yellow on the bulk line might be causing... Liam Dunster a little bit of a problem because I think Scott's Ten covered seconds. the pocket with the Extension black. Cool. You mentioned, Mark, that Liam knows he's already through tonight. He knows that, you know, regardless of what happens in this match, he's into the next phase of the competition. But the fact that he's won his first eight frames, do you think he, how much do you think he wants to go 12 nil here? He wants 12 now. He wants to win every frame he plays. I said this earlier in the night. He wants to win every frame possible. He could be playing for one pence. He, he'll want to win every <laughs> frame. He's, he, he's, he's just the way that he's... I think he's just that sort of player. He wants to win every everyone. He wants to win everything. And he's great to watch. Yeah, he's wired up with a will to win, that's for sure. Now he's, he's having a very good look at those two yellows on the right hand side. Um, are they a plant or is this just a safety shot? Total snooker. Just a safety shot, so a chance for Scott Anderson. One that he may not have been expecting, don't get me wrong, not a good chance. Yeah, Can he find that gap? Chance, wow. This is a 
It's, it's more of a hit. chance than the, <laughs> more of a chance than he had sitting in his seat, Mark. But um, yeah, I'll give you that. Foul. It wasn't a good one. <laughs> one for the shot. One do it. Time running. And now Liam has the frame and the table at his mercy. Just got to pick his way around these five yellows. Does have a free shot to use if he wants. Ten seconds. And he used it to make a relatively straightforward clearance, about as straightforward as they get. This is sort of the area that Liam Johnson has really got up. As soon as he gets that free shot, it's just the way he got the snooker as well. It is such a tough snooker to get out of. I imagine, Mark, that there would have been a fair few players to come in this draw watching this tonight who would have been hoping for an upset. And uh, they will probably be quite disappointed by the way this night has gone because Liam Dunster looks every inch the tournament favourite that we've made him out to be. Yeah, and he just keeps winning frame after frame after frame. This is nine on the bounce. Frame. It is genuinely phenomenal. Liam Dunster World number one, showing his class, nine frames in a row, 4-0, 4-0, and currently 1-0 with Liam to break next. Scott had a very good chance in that frame as well, and it's not the first time we've said that tonight. Scott has put down so many good opportunities, and they are the kind of opportunities that you can't afford to let go especially against players like Liam Dunster. No, they can't. And the Scott, he, he can't complain. Frame he's not two. had the day at the office where he's had Liam no Dunster chances. The break. Scott Anderson one frame has to had nil. plenty of chances here tonight. Time running. And he's got another one, a dry break from Liam Dunster. He turns over the table to Scott Anderson. It's not particularly nice though, is it, Mark? What's he got to start with? I mean, a three ball plant on the yellows, a, a, a plant on the reds here. Oh, he's gone for the plant on the reds. That was ambitious. I like the way he played it to open out the red nearest the the black as well in the same shot. It was intelligently played, but the execution wasn't quite there. No, it wasn't. And uh, well, look at this uh, chance here for Liam Dunster Extension to get his 10th frame in a row. You can't see any other outcome here, can you? You have to say it's a struggle to see any other outcome, that is for sure. Just look at that for a positional shot from Liam. Yeah. He's just class. Yeah, he's just Pure putting class. it on a sixpence, isn't he? He really is. Perhaps the one slightly tricky ball next up down the right hand rail, but all night he's been making his difficult shots look like drop ins and you just can't back against him to keep doing that. He has been a head and shoulders above the rest tonight. Ten seconds.
just perhaps underdone that a fraction. He's still in, in decent position. But it's the first time in this clearance he hasn't had it on that sixpence you mentioned, Mark. It's, he's just got to think about this one slightly. Ten seconds. Got to be careful. Yeah, it's like he's rerouting now. So he's going to take this into the top corner. I mean, it's obviously no problem for him. I think he looks like he's just got a slight angle on this. Just those five yellows in the top half of the table, isn't it? The, the, the position on the black, he's got a fairly big area to get into. But it's, it's slightly tricky. He's got to make sure he finds that window between the yellow on the balk line and the yellow just above it. Yeah, and this, uh, ang I mean, the angle he's got here is going to take him over to that far cushion. Just about enough. Little bit of distance. William's been making the game look easy all night long. And he continues to. Liam does that uh, with his 10th frame in a row tonight. It's been utterly dominant. We are running out of superlatives here for that Scotsman. The world number one. Someone's going to have to play very well if Liam Dunster's not going to win this tournament, Mark. Yeah, they are. I mean, there's still a lot of good players yet to, to be seen. This is only the first night. And... Uh, going to be how a lot more great players coming up. Well, Liam Dunster has been has been ruthless throughout tonight's uh, pool action. But we're going to see this Scott Anderson break again. Frame three. Scott yeah. Anderson to break. Trailing two frames to nil. Time running. Yeah, this is this is the one thing that you you'd say Liam Dunster could do with watching tonight because Scott Anderson's break. Well, has been phenomenal. <laughs> oh no! Well, one that shot. says it all for Scott tonight, one doesn't visit. it? Really. Time running, and he knows it. Yeah, he's just got a little bit too much power on that, and uh, the, the white has just taken off off the table. And it's going to be one free shot, one visit. Ten seconds. Extension called. <laughs> Big roll of the eyes from Scott Anderson there. He, uh, I think he just wants to get home, if I'm honest, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> he really cannot wait for this match to be over. So I think he's hoping that Liam clears these and then he'll break and clear the last. Do you think there's an extent to which he's sort of thinking, come on, Liam, like, <laughs> you're through, just get on with it. it? This is just torture now for, for Scott, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is. But like you said, uh, Dan, earlier, it, it doesn't matter whether the ball's over the pocket or it's the, the longest, you know, the hardest, longest ball ever. Liam takes the same uh -huh. amount of time over every shot. He gives it the utmost respect to everyone. Yeah, and that's that's one of the many reasons why he is number one. He just is the consummate professional. Everything he does is the same, the same routine. It's brilliant to watch in its own way. It's actually phenomenal. His levels of concentration are unmatched for me in the pool world. You have to scrape him off the table. Yeah, you do, and even even this frame. I mean, the, yeah, it's, I mean, he was always going to have a good chance with the one free shot, one visit, but he's, he's just making this look very, very easy indeed. 
yeah, and it wasn't uh, the the level of precision is there as always. It's almost surgical from Liam Dunster. And as I say that, he's underdone one. How'd you get on the black from here, Mark? Well, you think he's only got one option. He's going to have to play the back double and just hold himself for the black in the same pocket as the red. I think that's his only option, unless he can cut this seconds. around, but how's he going to avoid all of them yellow balls? There is a serious amount of traffic. He's gone for the back double. Hasn't quite got it. Second prize, though. He's got the cover of the pocket, and it's a pocket that Scott Anderson needs, so... I think under normal circumstances, we would definitely see Scott play safe here. Given the match situation and the night situation, do you think he might just have a go? No, nope, fair play. Well, I thought he was going to, but I think he wants to win a frame off Liam Dunster so before he leaves this arena. Yeah, and who can blame him? It would be, you know, it's been a torrid evening for him, but you have to say that would be a little feather in the cap if he was the one to take a frame off Liam. Oh, well, he hit it. Where's that yellow? It's just about stayed out as well. Unbelievable. How can you get that close and not pot it? That will be what's running through the mind of Liam Dunster right now. Yeah, and he's probably also running through the mind of Scott. He's, where can he hide this cue ball? Because he's looking at hiding the cue ball, but he's going to be leaving Liam seven. a pretty much easy escape. So he needs to decide wisely he's going out for it now yep yeah I don't think there's anywhere really nice to, to hide now for Scott but he does still have that problem yellow doesn't he oh wow that's wild that's wild how's his luck has he fluked one oh he's fluked one <laughs> he was on his way back to the seat He's not going to tuck him up now, is he? <laughs> you can't do that after a fluke. You get crucified in the pub. Ten seconds. He is, you know. <laughs> oh, this is such an easy escape for Liam, though. I... I'm not convinced about that one. Don't know about you, Mark. Yeah, he should have just uh, gone all out of it. He really should have. But he's going to uh, just have to uh, take this off this top cushion. There's only a one cushion escape. And he's going to be, well, he's going to have seconds. position on the black. Yeah, it's quite a big target as well, to be honest. Oh, wow, that slid a long, long way. Foul. I take it what back, Scott got? Anderson. What it was a great it? shot. Time running. <laughs> Time out. Liam just caught out by the very new, very slidey cushions and cloths on this table there. Time running. Because I think under normal circumstances he'd have backed himself to get that oh. well, I think he'd have backed himself to get it 10 out of 10. What on earth has Scott Anderson Bam. done here? Well, the writing is on the wall here. That's the fact. One digit. Time well, he looks away in dismay, and as well he might, but I don't know whether he feels that was unlucky. There were a hundred ways he could have done that clearance without needing to get anywhere near a pocket. It's not a good shot, and it leaves a tap-in for Liam Dunster for 3-0 up. One frame. Three successive 4 0 victories on the bounce. Just ridiculous from the Scotsman. So, well, I called it about seven frames ago, I think, Mark. Could Liam Dunster go the whole night unbeaten? He's very, very much on top now, isn't he? Yeah.
areas now, yeah, and this is break. Um, in this, uh, well, could it be the last frame of the night? He's been breaking pretty well. Yeah, he's been pretty devastating the way that he's cleared them up as well, and they've not been easy. No, he's, I was going to say that he's broken okay. He's made a ball most of the time, but yeah, it, it's he's had to take out some very precise clearances. Frame four. Uh, some very Liam Dunster-esque clearances, Dunster really. You know, the, the kind of thing that you nil. expect to see from him. Time running. But I can't think of an opportunity where his break has left him, you know, real drop-ins. So he'd love that to finish off the night. He hasn't got it, though. That is dry. Scott Anderson comes to the table once again. Looking to be the one who can take a frame off the duster. Nice confident pot there from Scott. In a situation where he has every right to to be lacking in a little confidence. But he really does have the freedom now to let his arm go and just take these out. Didn't want this angle. It's got to play into that yellow now. How's it come out? It's not bad. Not bad, he'll be pleased with that. Huge margin for error for position here. And it's, oh, he's just not got the side on it at all. This is a very thin snick. Attention all pockets. Attention all pockets. Oh, well, attention the top oh. right pocket. The cue ball's in. That will surely be Scott Anderson's last One free shot shots. of the evening. One visit. Time running. Yeah, that was another wild one there from Scott. I think that was frustration creeping. I mean, Extension cool. frame. He had to go up and down to get it didn't look particularly difficult he just didn't play that last positional shot with enough conviction for me no he didn't definitely not but Liam done stuff he's got uh, well pretty much easy clearance here especially with this one free shot as well he'd love to move that red I was going to say move red right it's a bit looks an angle. Yeah, so he's got Liam's just going to play seconds. this into this bottom right hand corner. Just trying to develop that a bit. He didn't want to be dropping that into the right middle. But now these have all opened out lovely. Yeah, I was a little surprised he didn't do that with his with his free shot to develop that one. I thought that was probably the most difficult one to develop, but he's done an excellent job. And just one shot Ten here seconds. really to get himself in prime position. And you feel like it's all over. And that will do him. This has been a dream for Liam Dunster. A perfect performance to open up his Champions Cup campaign. A trophy that he's won twice before. A 
trophy that he's trying to wrest back out of the hands of Gareth Hibbert. And what a benchmark he has laid down here. 12 frames Frame, in a row. Match, Liam Dunster wins 4 frames. Liam nil. Dunster wins 4-0, four 4-0, nil, four nil, four nil on the night. He set his stall out very early in this year's Champions Cup. Phenomenal from the Duster. Well, what more can we say? 12, 12 frames, 12 nil. Fantastic. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and that's just going to lift his win percentage even more now. Um, it was eight, eight, ten before that tonight, so now he's 11, 13, isn't he? And really and truthfully, you wouldn't fancy playing him in the next next group, would we? In the next stage of the tournament, would you? No, absolutely not. He's in, he's in terrific form. He's, you know, he's, he's come into this new year obviously in great form, and uh, who's going to stop him in that even sort of form? Even there, Mark, he, had, he, he knew he won, and when he was in the balls, he was still... The same, nice and steady, nice and steady. When he took the chances, it was just, it was just fantastic, wasn't it, to watch? You know what I mean? He, he just, he's, he just takes, it's just, it's just like a, a Rolls Royce. Yeah, he is. And, and I said in comms, I said he'll want to win every frame he plays. Even if that. he played it, even if he played a frame for a penny, he'd want to win it. I heard you say it, Mark, and I thought, well, really? And you were right. Because yeah. like you could see, he just took his time and he wanted to win everything, didn't he? He certainly you know, did. He was absolutely fantastic, wasn't he? And yeah. like, but that's some good matches. But one man shone, hasn't he? Above, you know. I know he was the only professional against three amateurs. We thought at the beginning, there's not that much difference between a professional and the amateurs. But after watching this tonight. But don't forget, he is the world champion, isn't he? You know? Where is the world number one for that? The world, the world number one. So, yeah. And he's proved it tonight, and we've seen it. And uh, well, you're a, you love Paul, you love the game, and from the grassroots as well. And I should imagine sitting there watching the performance like that, to, even in the last frame, as we said, he had it won. He never had to take his time, nice and steady. I've enjoyed watching it tonight, there. I think he's, you know. And it's been a good first night, you know, it's been a great first night of action. Well played to Liam Dunster, really unlucky to Jake, Matt and uh, Scott as well, you know, oh, be yeah. a little bit disappointed with some of the performances, but, you know, those up against the world number one. And also, I should imagine as well, the bookies, well, I've just had a few texts tonight, they've, uh, they've been on the, you know, somebody said it was like going in a ring with Tyson Fury tonight, that's how bad the bookies have, you know, they've, They've well, they've gone against the favourite, haven't they? Yeah, they've got everyone's back. Liam, you know, they're four to five before this morning went out, I think, to eight to 13. Although one of the one of our companies who were playing on it, he was still they were still four to five at the off, I've been told. So, wow. you know, you say the spread of money for all, all the players, but that was absolutely out as well. But I fancy tomorrow, I've had a little whisper in me here with Jamie. Oh, right, uh, you've, uh, you've had some inside information. Andy Close, Delta yeah. Moore? Well, he's my favourite. Tomorrow as well? Yeah, yeah, he is my favourite. So we're going to have a Pickford Picks 24 Pickford hours picks, before. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, but uh, if, you, if you are tomorrow, don't, don't forget, you've got to, what, well, if you've enjoyed it tonight, tomorrow's going to get to go one way. We're going to go better and better, aren't we? Absolutely. And uh, I don't think you'll have someone winning tomorrow 12 0, do you? No, it's not going to happen tomorrow. What odds would that be, Mark? What, for two lots of 12 nil in it, two Three lots lots of 12 of frames in a row? Three lots of player tomorrow to win 4-0, 4-0, 4 nil, four nil, four You're nil. the bookie. I mean, I, I wouldn't be giving Pickford's out any odds. Pickford's picks, <laughs> he don't want to play tomorrow. In fact, I'll be truthful, I might even get the chalk out of them. I might even have a go myself. I don't think anyone's going to win. Three matches, four nil, four nil, four nil. And there's some close matches tomorrow, isn't there? Yeah, and we might not see it again in this tournament. No. Really? Might not, might not even see it again. Oh, really? It's as close as that, yeah? It is as close as that. And we had no tie. We had, we had a tie tonight, have we? No, no. We've been close to one, only on one occasion. And the, so that when, I used to, when I used to do the darts, the Premier League, funny enough, we always used to pray every time we'd done the betting on the darts for a draw in the Premier League. And you think, well, am I going to get one? Am I going to get one? And they're like London buses. They come up two or three at a time. And, you know, don't forget, I think, and what, what you've told me tonight as well, one night, when Sporty Stuff TV, Champions Cup, six matches, 
we could have three or four or even five ties, couldn't we, in the night? So that may be the bet. Mark's a, the expert, not not hundred percent tonight, was you? But you know what you're saying. The tie, Mark said, the tie, the three, three. We had had I haven't had any tonight, so the bookies may push the price out tomorrow. Instead of going nine to four and five to two, we might get a bit of three to one a tie tomorrow. Well, if if you do see any three to one with the betting partners of sporty stuff tomorrow, I suggest on my own back here, have a little doubles and trebles tomorrow on the ties tomorrow because you've got them six matches. You know, you could even get two or three ties, couldn't you, Mark? Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to come up sooner or later. And they're probably all going to come at once. A bit like buses, they'll all come at once. I've been saying that for the last 30 years, getting the <laughs> premium bonds up. This will come up sooner or later, but you never know. We've had a great night, haven't we? Certainly it's have. been fantastic. And uh, thank, thanks to everyone involved, you know, and sporty stuff and all the cameramen here. I think everyone's enjoyed it. The refs played a good part as well, hasn't it? Been yeah, yeah. Everyone, and thankfully, eight players tonight, uh, four players who've turned up, it sounds like eight because it's getting a bit late now, but uh, we've enjoyed it and please God, we'll see you tomorrow night, same time, don't forget, straight after the Graham Racing comes on and, uh, and uh, from Mark and me, good night and God bless you. Good night.